Thank you. Sorry, I'm giving you all this tape, but this is he also sent me this. Okay. Yeah. We're ready. I think we're ready then. I just want to take like two minutes to make sure we're all on deck with how we're doing the questions. And I think that a couple people have said they'd like to ask some questions that maybe are not on this or um, in substitution for something that might be on here that you think. And so the, the main rule for us is to make sure that we ask the exact same questions of every candidate. So if we want to change one, we can. So I know Councilmember Wink has a couple of things she'd like to ask. Do you see some you'd just like to substitute them for? Or do you want to just ask them in the third, as the third person, if we go around this way, like Maria suggested, uh, or how do you want to do it? So, do we feel we will have sufficient time to get through every single question that is on these sheets of paper? Thirteen is a lot in my mind. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. So before so, answering that question, yeah. I'm thinking. Can well, you tell us what questions you have that we might all know, and then? Okay, so we will tell the candidate that they have an hour and that we have um, 13 questions, so they have to that's time keeping, time managing for, the, for them. They need to make a decision on how they spend their time. Um, that's part of the interview process. Um, since we have some substitutions, I think it will be easier. I won't ask any questions. I will just be taking notes. Um, that will serve this, this council better. So if we start with the mayor and we go around, and we start the same place, we should ask the same questions. So if you have a substitution, I will take note of it. Um, if you want to ask a question instead of the one that you have in front of you, that's fine. Okay? So again, we have to ask the same questions. And again, if they run out of time, they run out of time. I mean, yep. that's, that's something that we need to also wait on, I mean, how they manage their time. They know they have an hour already, so. So if we start with the mayor and work around this way, so like she would ask, describe your background and experience, mm -hmm. and then I would go with number two, how does your experience qualify you? Or a substitution if you have a substitution. Okay. I, would, I would like to suggest we ask those as together as the opening question. The first three? <clears throat> the first one, first two. Um, yeah, well the first three, what, what, I don't even remember that being one. I'm ha have you had experience in areas of local government service? We see that in this, maybe this one is weird, isn't it? I mean, when I saw it, I thought, wait, they all do. Those um, are the ones that we decided yeah, on. Yeah, but we so decided on. maybe the first and second one I could just ask is describe your, um, your background and experience and how that positions you for this job in particular. Yep. Okay. okay. That, that, that's, three. And so then, you, then three you can decide. Yeah, then it's up to us. Well, I and I, I think three is, a, is an okay question. So if I skip it, somebody else can, you know, Mr. Cuesta can ask it. Or well, it she would be second, so then she would oh. ask number three is what I would I'm ask, saying. Right, I would okay. ask number three um, because there may be areas that, they're def that the interviewee would be deficient in and how would you yeah. um, approach management? Yeah, and then Ms. Ms. Wing will ask, um, Mrs. Wing will ask the questions that she has and we can go on, keep going. Okay. With number four. So yeah. then she would ask her own, and then you would ask number four, number yep. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. Yes. And, unless you think I should ask these first two separately, I'm fine doing that. I think that. it's fine to combine them. Yeah, yeah I think it's fine to combine those. Not that's complicated. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. We're eating into her time. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Then let's begin. Let me go get her. Also going to introduce, have everybody. Yes, have everybody go around. <laughs> Probably doesn't matter if we. Hey, which district? Oh, she got locked out. Welcome. Welcome again. <laughs> Thanks, Virginia, for being here tonight. So we're going to go around and um, just introduce ourselves. I know you can see our names here, but break the ice here with our voices and uh, tell you what districts or how we serve. Great. I'm Linda Olson, Mayor in District 2. I'm Rita Russell, Mayor Pro Tem at Large. I'm Cheryl Wink, and I'm an at-large member. 
Good evening, my name is Dave Cuesta, I'm District 4. Hi, I'm Amy Martinez, at large. Old Daniel Sierra, District 1. Laura Barentine, District 3. Great. Thank you. We have a list of about 13 questions. Oh, that's an the interesting last, number. I know, it's, but the, the, the last one really is um, to ask you to, to let you ask questions of us. So just let you know that that's the last one for you. But we're, um, actually it's going to be 12 because we're going to combine one. And we're going to just go around so that each one of us asks a different one. Um, so the first one up is to have you describe to us your background and experience and how that sort of fits in with this particular position in this time. Sure, so thank you for uh, the opportunity this evening to sit with you and be considered for this position. Uh, you have my resume, and uh, very quickly, I was born in Grand Junction. I'm a farm kid. There were six of us on the Colorado River. I went to college in Boulder, studied economics. And upon graduating, I had a great job in Boulder, but really felt that my life was a little too um, small. My family didn't travel much because being farm kids, you don't travel much. And so with that, some friends and I took off. We did an extensive trip into Mexico, Canada, and uh, I had friends in Boston who were working and so went to New England. And it was really in Boston that I came to value Colorado because all they asked me about were our mountains, our trails, our air. And so it didn't take long in the Appalachian Trail to decide there are no black flies in Colorado. <laughs> and so, thank goodness. And so I came back and took a job in Montrose as a regional planner. And it was during the days of boomtowns, Colorado, and, and was going to help the United States get off Middle Eastern oil. And so towns from Rifle to Grand Junction, Delta were growing very rapidly. And so I began to assist those towns in identifying what their infrastructure, housing, and social needs were. Um, I was recruited by Delta County to become their senior planner in essence and project director uh, to help them specifically. Big new coal mine coming in and I would negotiate for the um, Delta County. The mine was in Gunnison County but the impacts were in Delta County and we had a uh, precedent setting a negotiation to address housing and other needs of the workforce that would follow those miners. But most importantly I was selected to be on the governor's cumulative impact task force and that's a group of us who met frequently to really help discern for the state of Colorado how to address rapid growth from energy development. And that's when I really learned about taxation, infrastructure, and social demands on government, not just cities, but counties, school districts. Um, from the Delta County experience, I felt that I had uh, gained enough and applied to become the city assistant manager of Telluride and received that job. Within a year, I was promoted to town manager. I was there eight years. The accomplishments, I think, are large. When I got there, it was dirt streets. Most of Main Street was empty, and there was no mountain village. By the time I would re um, retire or resign from that position, it was quite different. Many accomplishments, maybe the biggest three, housing. I was the city manager that developed the first 85 units of deed-restricted rental housing and 200 <clears throat> plus units of deed-restricted for sale housing. I was the lead with the mayor in settling a major Superfund lawsuit against Newmont Gold and we received uh, half a million dollars, but most importantly, the senior water rights held by Adorado. And those today have been put into use for the city's domestic water. Can't say Telluride without saying festivals. When I got to tell you right, they were fun. It was a garbage heap, but lots of fun and lots of great music. So in working with the city, uh, we made a lot of changes so that the city could accommodate 10,000 people coming in weekend after weekend and control the garbage, the camping, the parking, and those festivals to this very day sell out. Not just the music, but the film festivals. Eight years into the job, my husband wanted to return to work. We had two little children that had been born while I was the city manager. And so I left that job only to be um, asked to join the school district's accountability committee. Long story short, three years later, I founded the Telluride Mountain School, an independent school. It is today 20 years old. 
It is Montessori through 12th grade. Um, I serve on the advisory committee. It is without doubt the most rewarding thing I've ever done other than help people get housing. And I can say unequivocally that the Telluride Mountain School today and the public school system are exceptional. Uh, we moved to Sun Valley, Idaho, because we also felt that our kids were living a very insular, privileged life. Now we are mountain people, so we went to another ski resort. But it would be the first time our kids really had to introduce themselves, make friends, skill sets that don't often come in these small communities. And so uh, I would return to Telluride the first year we were in Sun Valley to actually run the Telluride Mountain Film Festival. I had joined the board. There was a large deficit, a lot of acrimony. Staff people didn't like each other. Board people didn't like each other. Sides were drawn. And so for one year pro bono, I ran the film festival and proudly left with a surplus and uh, much better um, behaviors and standards and a lot of uh, rebuilding among people and human relationships, literally. Driving into Sun Valley after doing the film festival, my cell phone rings, it's the mayor of Sun Valley. I've heard something about you being a town manager. I need one. Would you talk to me? So I became the Sun Valley city manager. The greatest outcome from that job was um, the rewrite, redevelopment of a comprehensive plan, uh, which took a lot of effort, a lot of community input, and we completed that work. About that time, my younger daughter made the U.S. ski team, mogul skier. She was back east, attending Holderness School in New Hampshire. She was a junior in high school, and I truly felt she needed her mom to do her laundry <laughs> so that she could study, because skiing's really cool, but college is even cooler. And so my husband and I moved to New Hampshire for two school years and uh, took care of her. Uh, and then when she went off to college, it was 2009, and my husband, in a very wonderful moment, was offered a job in New York City. He had worked on Wall Street. It was the height of the economic uh, recession. So we moved to New York City. Oh, so I indulged myself in the arts and the diversity of that amazing city. I did work part-time uh, doing research for a new company that was pursuing a new treatment for sludge, wastewater treatment plant, sludge. So I did that glamorous work for a while when the phone rang and a new mayor from Sun Valley, Idaho, called me and asked me if I would consider coming back as the city manager, that the staff recommended that maybe I might be the right person, that my successor had created in his words, camp run amok. And so I could return, and for one year, the most interesting year probably of my city management life, I oversaw a very expensive forensic audit that looked at every aspect of staff expenditures, staff behaviors. And that, that you know, affirmed for me something I hadn't thought all that much about, but knew about the importance of culture the importance that the culture of the organization, the behaviors, be owned by everyone, not just the town manager. And so uh, about that time, a year into that job, wrapping up that forensic uh, audit, my daughter, who lives in Vail after college, the ski patrol called and said, Mom, the Avon job is open. And so wouldn't it be cool if we all lived in Colorado again? And so uh, I applied for it and got that job. Avon, interesting to me, uh, driving the I-70 corridor, going to school in Boulder. Uh, when I went for the interview and drove around, all I could think of is, how did Avon get so passed by when it sits at the base of Beaver Creek Resort? And so the council in hiring me agreed to write their first strategic plan. <coughs> I have, I think, strong breadth and depth in public financing and governmental uh, taxation and revenues. And so I was able to match the strategic plan with the town's revenues. And so we commenced to do a lot of uh, infrastructure improvements, monies to seed festivals, and all of that was done without any new taxations. Uh, preeminent in that is a brand new police station, but we brought together the fire district and formed a public safety building, and through just a moment of luck, 
more luck than pluck, but I was able to attract a medical office facility that helped underwrite the land for that uh, new public safety facility, which is now open. Uh, we built a beautiful $3.8 million outdoor stage, streetscape, street improvements, all done with um, cash, but I also had realized we had two bond issues that were ending. And that meant that the sales tax in one bond issue and the property tax in the other could be, I'll use the word, converted to new projects without raising taxes. Uh, maybe the, the greatest gain for Avon, I believe, is a cultural shift in the staff. From what I learned in my time back with the forensic audit, I commenced uh, interviewing all 100 employees the first couple weeks in that job and realized with them, overtly and honestly, that they were siloed, many of them entitled, and many of them hadn't had evaluations, hadn't had raises. There was no vision, direction, no accountability, and I literally none. So with that, um, we wrote a culture statement, Behaviors for Everyone. I worked with the council to put in place a high pay, high performance system for the staff, brought in market studies, compensation plans, step plans, 360 reviews, always done. And today, with the leadership team, all staff must receive a high performance review to remain at the town. We absolutely invest in um, corrective actions, in mentoring, and in providing professional development. But uh, I would offer to you, and I think the reference letters you received from some of my staff speak to the remarkable change, remarkable change in culture. In May of this year, uh, town council was doing my evaluation. The mayor asked if I could wait uh, past the deadline that they needed to meet on my compensation, that I had an excellent review. Only uh, one day later, after the review, to have a call from the town attorney saying the council had decided they, it was time for a change in management. So as a professional town manager, I certainly appreciate that. And the council must have the manager uh, that they wish to have leading and the team and working for them. And uh, I feel very good about the position Avon is left in. They have stellar reserves, an excellent strategic plan, great staff. So since May, I've been traveling um, back recently from Mongolia. I'm a mountaineer, climbed some peaks, been hanging out, doing travel, family reunions. When somebody told me about this job, or I think told Maria, Maria contacted me. So to the issue of how, how does my background assist? I think what's interesting about a small mountain towns, they are sophisticated. They are not provincial. And so much of what we do is the same as Englewood does, from the arts to transit to interest in housing and economic development. So I think what benefits me in sitting uh, here with you tonight is I'm ready to go. I have a strong background in understanding governance and uh, making sure that service delivery is well done. I think I also have a good background to work with councils on, and most importantly, but we have to talk about this tonight, is what are your expectations and how to get you ready to hire your next manager and what are the steps in the process to get that done? Great, thank you. Your pro tem's next. Um, Okay, uh, how have you had experience in all areas of local government service, and are there any areas um, that you have not had experience in, and how would you approach the management in those areas? So as I've shared with you, and I think my resume shows, um, you know, when we think first and foremost about water and sewer, um, I was part of the team that constructed the new sewer plant in Telluride, understand those mechanics. I, you know, I'm a generalist to the extent uh, for those. Certainly street improvements. I was the, also the, man, I was a manager who brought different techniques to Avon for slurries and waste and a five-year program to protect, 20-year program actually, for those streets. Uh, really strong background in the arts, music in, protect, in particular, um, outdoor performance, indoor performance. 
budgeting. Uh, in all of the towns I've worked in, they evolved to multi-year budgeting, not just for capital fund, but for the general fund. And uh, had I stayed with Avon this year, we went to two years. We really needed to go to three years. And so the value of having three-year operational budgets in all the enterprise funds as well as the general operating funds I think is really important so we can see how the council's decisions affect each year. Sometimes you can't do everything, but you can do many things over many years. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with traffic lights. I noticed that today driving around <laughs> Englewood. Um, you know, I know quite a bit about rapid transit and moving people. Uh, proud to say, I think Avon's the first mobility department in the state of Colorado. Uh, we merged all of our uh, mobility uh, types into one department, including our parking, so that we could understand that relationship. So, I feel really solid in terms of local government experience. All right. Thank you. So. Virginia, to um, tie into one of the comments you, you just made, uh, you mentioned, and I think you mentioned it also pre prior to question two's answer, um, speaking about water and sewer knowledge and experience. Um, what, in your opinion, are the core components of infrastructure and environment, and, and how do you approach managing this within a city like Anglewood? Just around water and sewer, or? Infrastructure and environment, so a little step above that bucket. Sure. So it, we see this, uh, or I see it, in being in Englewood but throughout, I think, Colorado, and it's a really attractive thing, the importance of the environment and how we use the environment and the resources and how the environment serves the health and well-being of our populations and is attractive to those who want to come and visit. So that's a, that's a high priority to think about in terms of the city and the vision for the city. Clean air and clean water are just critical elements for the city. I can see in the national survey concerns about water quality. If I understood with the little bit of research I did, your water quality suffers that it's hard water and difficult uh, to treat. But the dependency today on your water supply, I would imagine, is either known, you know, feeling very good about that, even if extended droughts occur, and reservoirs begin to be tapped more frequently than <clears throat> any of us have maybe experienced. So assuring that we have water, both indoor and outdoor, and we know that a lot of water is wasted, uh, and first and foremost, we look to the outdoor water and watering. Uh, in Avon, all of our streetscape uh, went very low water to no water. It's beautiful, and it fits within that, that area. A wastewater treatment, you're probably part of a large district, um, centralized sewer, uh, making sure that that infrastructure is kept up. And uh, you know the whole thing around pipes and leaks and knowing that the infrastructure for water and sewer is very sound and is invested in, I think is critically important. Um, that's what you were kind of wondering about. I, I was looking for however you, you felt the need to interpret and respond to that question. So that's lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Eger, can you give me an example of when you initiated a change in process or operations in response to customer feedback? And within that, if you could speak to why did you determine the change was necessary? What was the outcome of that change and any feedback you received in that change? Sure. So uh, this past winter, we have a free bus service that runs uh, within the town. Uh, that costs the town about $4 million a year. It's paid for with a lodging tax. And then we interface with the valley service that goes up and down the valley. We do not contribute to that. That's funded with taxes and managed by the county. We had a new a citizen who really rode that free transit. And he, um, I would say, I don't like when it goes this way, but people need to get their message out. He came to the town council, public comment, and just railed about how inefficient our system was to move skiers 
and he in particular with two little kids up and down the mountain at convenient times throughout the day. And so uh, we, predominantly the new mobility director, got on the bus with him, rode, looked at why some things he thought should be done that were kind of customized to his front door, probably were not going to be efficient or cost effective, but he had good ideas. And uh, it was out of his input that we first implemented one strategy, which then he came back and said, I see why this doesn't work, and the skiers are getting upset because we've extended the loop, blah, blah. And so uh, with that, we were finally able to get the loop service that worked as well for our local riders as well as for our tourists. Very good. Thank you. Let me add, all of that being reported to the town council. How did you say it was paid for? It was $4 million? The uh, up and down. Uh, lodging tax. Yeah, lodging, right. lodging tax. tax yeah. That's a 4% um, tax. Okay. Um, you. So you touched on this a little bit, but we'll, we'll just ask it again. Um, tell us about a time when you're able to improve the morale of an unmotivated employee or coworker, or when you got your coworkers really excited about something that they weren't really excited about. And tell us about that situation and what actions you took and what was the outcome and if you received any feedback. Oh. It's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> but just kind of tell us, tell us about, you know, improving motivation. So our rec director, who, uh, when I first started and interviewed in Avon, the recreation director who'd been there like 20 years, said, oh, by the way, I'm going to resign. Oh, okay. Uh, and she did soon after I started. So the assistant rec director, lovely person, seemed competent, uh, was not pleased to learn that I was going to do a job search. He uh, was recommended to be appointed to the director's job, but I feel really strongly and practice all the time, happened with the police chief too, uh, that a search is really important. You need to validate you're the best, and I think the internal candidates rise up. They have to rethink. They have to prepare for an interview uh, to, if I may, win that job. And he did, but it took about a year. And he was very, very, uh, I would say, concerned about my leadership and high standards for performance. And so what was cool is that under our uh, culture statement, you have to have courage. It's one of our things. He came to me and said, I need to talk to you. And so I sat with him and mentored him. And one of the things that we could see and we still see is the need to expand that rec center. So I worked closely with him and his staff to prepare a proposal for a rec center uh, ballot issue. The, again, that was in our strategic plan, and the council uh, put that forward to the ballot. It didn't pass by 30-some votes. And he and I came back and looked at how to refurbish the rec center to make it a wonderful place that people would want to come to versus going to private spas in the region. Uh, we also uh, looked at his staffing, and that rec center was, uh, you know, about a 40 percent return. Unacceptable. It's a hundred percent today. So through working with him, hearing his concerns about the facility, but also about working with me, I think we were able to create a very strong, successful relationship for the city. And I think the pride he has today and respect he has today for revenue recovery, great programming, uh, is, is an example of morale, morale change. He also um, is a great spokesperson about trust building. And so I asked him to work with our leadership team to do some mentoring and presentations around trust building. So I really wanted, uh, deservedly so, to showcase his uh, abilities and his, his importance to our staff. Great, that's a wonderful example. Thank you. Councilmember Member Sierra. Thank you, Ms. Hager, uh, for uh, allowing us to interview you tonight. So my question is about relationship building and so can you tell me a uh, about a time when you anticipated an issue or conflict between coworkers? 
at work and took action to address the situation before it escalated. So um, what was your role? How did you identify the issue or the conflict? And uh, what actions did you take? Thinking about the second parts to those questions right. before it escalated. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes um, that's when it gets to me, is when it's uh, gained a little bit. So uh, as I mentioned, I interviewed all of the staff when I began, not just the directors. And, but it became clear, uh, so we have Town Hall, which is downstairs, and then we have what's called Swift Gulch, and that's where our fleet repair is, as well as our uh, bus transit facility. And the, employ and the fleet director and the um, uh, public works director did not get along. That was clear. And there were really strong behavior issues on both sides. And why there was not a blow-up conflict in front of me, I learned of the lack of trust and how much it affected the efficiency and the innovation and everything you know gets screwed up when people don't get along at the top. And so um, the HR director and I met with them and asked them, to reflect and evaluate on their own behaviors, their own styles, and how much of the problem they actually owned. And out of that, uh, the public works director, th the most amazing moment in my life working with staff, came to me and said, I've looked in the mirror and I own a big piece of this. And he changed. Now change like that is super hard. But he opened his door became way more open to what the fleet director's concerns were, were about, you know, he's got a lot of snow plows and trucks and they need to get done, but buses are coming in and at times uh, so are weed whackers. So there's priorities and priority setting and some vehicles absolutely cannot go out under certain repair problems. And so those two really came together uh, and corrected that problem. But I would say it is the public works director who really uh, gets most of the credit for making a positive change in that relationship. That's great. Thank you. Hi. What experience do you have with finance administration? So I have a lot of experience. And in some ways, um, not all town managers or city managers probably have uh, the same degree of interest I've had in the budget. but. Studying economics, money. It's all about the money. And if the money isn't understood and can't implement the plans of the council, um, then we need to know that. Or how can money implement the plans, both near term and longer term? And as you know, and uh, we've already you know, walked a little bit into enterprise funds versus reserves and uh, operating funds, capital funds. Uh, I, I know a lot about those. I know how to read a bond prospectus, and that's how I came to realize that um, reading the annual audit, I still remember, I'm like, oh, what a lucky girl. We have two bond issues ending, just knowing that that created opportunity for Avon. Uh, in the day, uh, it was all Excel spreadsheets, and so as budgets would come in, we have our strategic plan, we have direction, we meet a staff to talk about our uh, promises, I'll say, or our agreements among us in terms of staffing or uh, other needs and wants, computers, uh, IT, et cetera. So everybody has worked together before they start printing numbers in. Uh, and so they, pre they prepare the budget as directors, then it comes to me, I meet one-on-one -on -one with them, those are pretty rigorous. Uh, at times, you know, they just have to defend some of the increases. Again, they're multi-year. I don't see people asking for things that aren't really warranted. Sometimes they're a little shinier than maybe are needed or a little sooner. Uh, but I am able to sit and uh, discern immediately uh, changes in uh, percents of budget, but most importantly, how money gets, gets the work done that the uh, council wants to get done. Um, it's, really, it's really important to me to understand and take an active role in the development of the budget. Now under a charter, the, count, the 
city manager always prepares the budget, but as we know, the finance department is really important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we, we do have a comprehensive plan that we just finished a bit ago, but um, there's always planning going on. So how do you approach the planning process, and what do you do to set objectives, keep track of them, and prioritize? Can you just describe that for us? So uh, I trust, the, so the comprehensive plan is adopted. Yes. I assume yes. there's the community development. It's a living document. It's a living we document. We continue to be reviewing it, which we have not necessarily been great at. But And, the, and those comprehensive plan. that's the really powerful <coughs> document that also comes into a strategic plan. Uh, so working with the community development department or just with developers, I, I did not mention, uh, I think it's in my resume, when I left the town of Telluride and my husband went back to work full time, we were partners in a major piece of property across from the Telluride ski area. Uh, it was about, I want to say about 350 acres. And it was so interesting to sit on the other side of the table now as someone being regulated, at, we wanted that property developed uh, versus being a regulator. And so what became really in, was so clear to me is the importance of a great working relationship with developers. And time and wasteful documents that planning departments may ask for. I mean, there are things that must be provided. But I also saw in my own experience the, um, the, the uneven-handedness of a planner, of a commission, and when I got to Avon, that was in spades. Oh, the planner said next to me one night as we're leaving, oh, too bad, I came in five minutes late, guess I'll have to wait another four weeks to get on the agenda. Endearing myself to the planner, I said, ah, oh, I don't think so. I think it'll probably take the 10 minutes to get it on the agenda, two weeks. I just, you know, that was just unacceptable power review. Uh, and so things changed a lot to partnership. You know, we all believe in smart growth, in really good development, and that bad projects are proposed, and there are great projects that are proposed. So it's really important to have everyone, including the council, I think, and you're not expected to read all these documents, but front and center, what is that comp plan saying, and what are the priorities uh, to be accomplished? as you look at budget uh, implementation also, and training for the staff, and meetings, I think, with the development community, at least annually, to allow them to come in to critique how our planning department is working. Um, I would expect, and I assume you get from the planning department regular reports on building permits and activity and valuations. Um, I did see it looked like you had some interesting studies being done. Uh, for the good of Englewood. So it's the one department that's pretty high profile usually uh, and really important to the commerce of the city of Englewood. So as a manager, you know, am I a micromanager? Sometimes. Rarely. But if it's going all wrong, then I'm involved. But when there's good staff, great documents, implementation, uh, then I, my interest is to meet with the community development director, know what's going on, and make sure the council knows what's happening and things are getting updated as conditions change. Great. I want to give you a chance for follow-up. I may have set you a bit on a road down comp plan, but um, if there's anything more about general, just planning in general in your style of leadership, um, how do you go about that? So uh, let's... You know, think of something about a mobility department or, or uh, mobility in the city of Englewood. You know, first is, is understanding what we think we need and want to change, but highly, uh, highly driven with civic engagement, whether it's neighborhood-based or citywide-based. Uh, you know, these, these kind of plans really matter to the citizenry, and they have great ideas, and they have good information that as a city manager, I'm never gonna get. You know, people out there, including yourselves, are interacting in a way I will not interact with the citizenry. So I think all good planning 
is highly uh, re responsible to the citizenry to get their information. And yeah, those are the kind of rooms with stickies and notes and redounding, you know, to something that, that uh, now needs to go forward in a public forum. Um, planning is so important to a city's success and needs to be dynamic um, and pretty. I noticed some of your documents are so beautiful, nicely done. I like the graphics. Okay, they don't have to be pretty. Thank you. <laughs> um, how do you view the relationship between the administrator and the governing body, and how do you view your relationship with department heads and local government staff? So, uh, city managers right in the middle, right? Uh, most important is the relationship with you. I am one of your few employees, and your, your vision, your policies, I need to work with are really well articulated. I need to work closely with each and every one of you. If, if I was offered or received this job, I need to meet one-on-one. -on -one. Why did you run for office? What are you hoping to accomplish? Looking for that common ground and looking for areas of immediacy or more long-term growth. It is critical that you are well informed, that I am transparent, um, that I am working with you as equals. Uh, there are no favorites. There are no behind the scenes uh, discussions. I really do abhor business being done outside of the council chambers. I think the public deserves the debate uh, in front of them. Uh, so from you, though, I really have to have what your expectations are. And they have to be really well articulated. And we have to communicate that well. And you, I think, have a responsibility to me to give feedback. If I'm not doing well or even doing well, it's really important to have that constant communication that takes time, that takes effort. Uh, and then, as I said, policy development, vision, all of that is so important. Uh, working with the directors, you know, I, they need to be involved as well in understanding the council's visions and goals. They have to have a context for their work. They need to work together. The leadership team has to understand public works, I think, against or with transit, et cetera, et cetera, for them to do their jobs well. So the leadership team uh, in Avon, we meet after the council meeting. We review uh, the outcomes of that and work that needs to be distributed to each of them with deadlines, responsibilities. Sometimes that work is uh, team conducted, but there's always somebody who leads uh, that effort. Uh, they're held highly accountable. They know it. Uh, but they also need from me the same. What are the expectations I have for them? And what's the feedback that I give to them? Sounds easy. It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, you're next. I can go or, you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can go and then we uh, oh, you oh, She's ready. Okay. Thank you. Um, so... This is a really, what experience have you had working on an intergovernmental or interagency basis in all of your experience? And specifically, have you worked directly with state and federal governments, councils of governments, and different units of government than maybe we've spoken about so far? Uh, certainly. So in my most recent job, I was in the I-70 I coalition uh, we're a group of ski towns that work with state and federal government about trying to, I know this might sound like we're not being all that successful, uh, helping with the congestion on I-70. And so we have done actually a lot uh, to accomplish. You see things now if you're driving that corridor, the express lane, some of the shoulder improvements, billboarding, timing all came through, working with state, federal, other cities and regional agencies. In Sun Valley, uh, there was an interest. There's an airport that needed funding. Again, worked across uh, with counties, cities, state, federal agencies, uh, looking at the funding that they had available 
uh, and that would end up being three or sales tax issues I think in the county and three cities all of those passed to help support the airport so having great relationships with federal and state agencies is very important they have some of them a lot of money I've written with staff grants uh, especially from federal monies we didn't get the tiger grant but we've gotten federal grants for uh, bike paths street improvements or not street improvements but the bike path um, you know the organizations Colorado Association of Ski Towns where we came together uh, to lobby state legislative uh, folks and the governor about our needs and the reason that we need to have our own taxation and freedom to guide our uh, work. So. Councilmember <coughs> Pesta, could you jump back to 10? You bet. Thanks. To what extent do you believe contact with citizens and citizen groups is important, and how do you typically handle this responsibility? Really important, can be handled, and should be in, in a multitude of different ways. Um, I see on your website uh, that you do have, if I understood it correctly, that people can uh, notice potholes or other service needs through their app. How cool is that? So that's not necessarily me. But outreach, chambers of commerce, uh, civic organizations, invitations, business development uh, organizations, I should be meeting or a city manager should be meeting and working with them closely to hear what they think is good about the city and to hear what they think uh, could improve the city um, as I've already mentioned I think sometimes many times the best information sits with the citizenry and some of the best decisions Telluride's open space fund was created in a packed room with people who wanted an open space fund and we weren't being successful and it was a citizen who said I have an idea and that idea became an open space fund it was to gather monies in a certain way from our funds um, you know I think one needs to be really credible with the citizenry that they don't see you as just you know thank you listening but not listening uh, and I, I think the city manager with the department directors the council have really critical roles in uh, building maintaining uh, and getting civic engagement to grow we all have that problem you throw a great meeting and not too many people show up I think also if I may is there are those who show up all the time and maybe uh, feel over involved in governance and I think that that set of folks need to be listened to as if they're a fresh face every time you greet them or they come to the meeting. You know, they are interested in city life, have ideas, uh, and should be engaged um, seriously. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what will your first steps be upon assuming responsibility for this position? And what could we do to make sure you're successful in your first three months? So the first step has to be, what are your expectations for this job? That, that would be before you would offer, or in, if you were offering me the job. So the first step uh, is, again, meeting, I think, with each of you individually, so I get to know you, understand why you ran for council, where you're at, what your expectations are, what you'd like to see accomplished. Uh, you know, jump in to, I think, systems as they are. I'm not here to change those systems I'm here to listen learn and help facilitate this is an interim position this is uh, would be my guess there may be something you definitely want done in the next six months uh, so I need to know what that is otherwise I think it's first and foremost again the council what you what you want what you don't want and then the leadership team you know I'd like to uh, of course hear from them in an equal shared way what are their needs over the next six months there are some things they can't approve that town managers, city managers can only approve and making sure that things are working for them in an efficient streamlined thoughtful way and also I think helping them with you I think this is a little repetitive on my part but how are you preparing for the next city manager and what is your hope for the city at the time that that manager uh, t 
takes the position. I could also see uh, asking the directors if they're comfortable to meet at a department head meeting with their staff. It's really cool when you know people's names and where their kids go to school, and um, that's easily done. I mean, you can meet hundreds of people and know them and know something about them that helps uh, me in my job. Oh, now the fun question. So <laughs> what questions do you have for us? Uh, so you're all seated. Uh, next election is November of 2019. So that seems like a nice long period of time to uh, look at accomplishing some things. But where are you in uh, your thinking about what are the expectations for the interim manager? So do you want to begin or? Yeah, I think any of us can chime in. So I guess from my point of view, obviously um, with the interim position, we, you know, obviously what's foremost on my mind is just the budget. Uh, so getting through the budget process and just identifying what the priority are, priorities are uh, in terms of just, um, like you said earlier, getting us prepared for 2019 and also what the next city manager is going to be doing for the city. So overall, what are our priorities for council, um, which we haven't really defined really that well, I believe. Um, you know, there's a lot of process improvements that I think are needed. Um, and so I think that that would be something that I would like for the interim to look at as well. Give us ideas about how we can be improving as a city. Great. Anyone else? I would concur with um, Councilmember Sierra and add that um, you know, just like you said earlier, to jump right in and kind of meet everybody and kind of keep helping steer the ship in the right direction. And um, I think also helping us prepare for what we do want to look for in our permanent city manager and what we should be, the questions we should be thinking about in preparation for that. Uh, I think that there's, you know, many components and we could spend a lot of time discussing those. One of the ones for me though is a steady hand. Uh, we just had our staff undergo a transition out of a manager that they worked under for a long time, and I think that he was well-respected. Uh, we'll be bringing on an interim manager and then switching to another manager, potentially in short order. And so just keeping um, things level, making sure things are proceeding as they should. If there's areas of improvement or things that we can um, uh, focus on and, and get better at, as, as Council Member Sierra alluded to, those are always great to pick up along the way. But really, I'm looking for pretty calm waters as we go through the next, call it six, eight months. Sense. Thank you. I, um, I agree with the things that have been said. I think that uh, there are a few topics that we've asked for some things in the next three months, one of them being around a change in the way we might think about code and code enforcement, and that's somewhat related to some current or just recent um, flooding and some relationships that have developed out of that of thinking ahead and how do we fix our infrastructure and do some improvements around that. I think the finances and our uh, way in which we think about revenue generation in the city, we have had a hard time really having some tough conversations around that. So um, I'm not sure if we need to be doing that right away, but um, having some eyes from the outside on that and some advice could be really helpful. Uh, and I think there are there are other things like that. Um, I think for the most part, though, I think most probably, at least in my perspective, I would agree with Member Cuesta that uh, we'd like some stability, some fresh eyes on some things, but to keep us moving on our strategic plan and some of the strategic um, objectives that we've had as council. We did have a retreat in, is it April, March, March maybe? And, and May, May 8th, March 8th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when it was. Um, uh, unfortunately, Member Sierra wasn't there, and we probably need to bring him up to speed more and actually revisit all the things we came up with then, which could be a, a useful uh, process as well. I would agree. It's probably some stability. We came off of the last one wasn't long-term compared to the one before. That was 17 years, so four years for the last city manager is a very short period of time. While that may be the average lifespan of, you know, total, it isn't usually for the city, and with that, you also had um, the transition of a lot of uh, 20 and 30-year employees. So it's been a lot, probably 
in just in the director positions in the last four years as well at least 20 people three three and four uh, different directors within that four-year period for all of our major ones have have changed over and so there's been a lot of um, uh, combining of departments and kind of a change agent kind of philosophy to it, but I think it, when you had that kind of stability and then have that without the uh, tenure of it following through past four years, it, it can create a lot of chaos. And so just having some stability, reestablishing relationships and where the, how we represent and where we're going. And of course, you know, when you mentioned um, helping guide a little bit to where we see where this council representing the community sees moving forward and, and what the future brings. How do you think you're perceived by the staff? I could, I could answer that. I do believe that a lot of the staff perceives that we are a divided council. We've heard that said. Um, so that is um, an issue. Yes. I think as you mentioned that um, creating a relationship where there's an even communication among all council really helps uh, for that not to happen. And so that there's good re working relationship. I, I was um, like the comment that you made about the transparency and making sure that nothing happens outside of the purview of that process. And I think that that helps make everybody more comfortable and at, at peace with where things are going so that they're all informed at the same time. Consistent communication, I think, helps. I, I would concur. I think probably staff look at us as divided and uh, not sure where we're going with some things. And, uh, and I think difference is great to get to good decisions, but we sometimes have a hard time figuring that out together. So, and it's exacerbated perhaps with some public input that at different times feels attacking and how do we handle that together rather than just individually and how do we support one another in that. Uh, I think that's something that we lack. So we could use some help on that. Mm -hmm. How do you think you're perceived by the community? certainly something I heard much of the time and, and still hear from a large group of, of citizens. Um, not, not only feeling that sense of division, but the, the ramification or the, the resulting impact on the staff is seen as uh, an opportunity greatly missed. I think another thing that the citizenry has come forward probably in the last um, couple of months is they feel like council does not listen to them as a whole, that we do not respond um, to what they want. Um, and may, may I ask, is that for matters on the agenda or things that they think um, should be different? Um, that aren't that aren't before the council. That um, probably not necessarily things on the agenda, but um, things that they would like different. Um, say, for instance, the development in the city. Uh, there are districts in the city that have um, their smaller houses, and developers have bought the property next door, and there's triplexes going in. Could see that today. Yes, and and the people that own houses in those neighborhoods are very upset and when they come to council they feel like council is not listening um, to what they're saying. Do you, Do you think like the council would be interested? I, I tend to have to agree a steady hand stability is really important uh, but as we talk about the future and the next uh, city manager it, do you think the council is willing to begin to do the hard work of trying to address the divisiveness, to address the, uh, the perceptions, uh, which may be our reality, I don't know, uh, during the next period of time, including if that 
required some outside um, assistance? I think we have to. We have used outside assistance before. It was a different council, of course, but we haven't with this particular council. But I, I think it's incumbent upon us to. Uh, we're talking about six months possibly till the next manager. We cannot fritter away our time and energy and be drained emotionally and and still serve well. So, I'm willing. I'm ready. I think we need to find a process for it. With that being said, almost a majority of this council is different than it was a year. Six mm -hmm. months ago, there's three new people. So, we have, yeah, so it's not people. it's not even the same council. And then maybe coming to some determinations on 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 what what really divisiveness is and whether agreement is offensive or whether you know a disagreement is offensive or whether we can manage to do things in a way where there's a robust conversation without people walking away from the table because they didn't get what they wanted. I mean, the the citizens have brought things forward both that they're concerned about and um, that were on the agendas. And I believe pushing, pushing it down or putting your head in the sand didn't, didn't work. All it did was make them regular attendees of the council meetings and it not being addressed. And so not only did this council get some feedback from that, but also the city manager um, uh, took that as well, that if there was a perception that there wasn't a, it wasn't being addressed, that the issues weren't being addressed. And all that does is make them come every council meeting until they believe they're going to get heard. You asked a good question about on the agenda or not. Um, I think that's where we have some struggles. We have lots of things on the agenda that we hear nothing about and then lots of things that people are upset about that are not on the agenda and don't end up on the agenda because they're not whatever is currently being dealt with. So there's a disconnect that needs to be reconsidered in how we handle it. Sometimes I think it's a case of middle grounds as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some people who say they want it done this way at council, and you can find people in the audience who want it done the other way as well. So sometimes it's not personal disagreement. It's more philosophical, and, and how do we get to that point where we can move forward? So um, I think it is not just hearing one voice, but hearing every voice and kind of finding that point of compromise where really we can always get to some solution that can hopefully find some satisfaction with everybody in the crowd, and that's sometimes easier said than done, to be sure. <laughs> but um, I think that we have a council that's looking to cooperate with each other. Again, I don't think there's any personal animus among this group. I think it is sometimes more philosophy and just getting to that end result where everybody can find something of a win for the folks that they're hoping to represent. I think you have a great opportunity before you. I mean, I am a positive person. This is hard work. These are hard jobs. Um, but it sounds like there's a special moment if council's willing to lean in and look together to find a path to become the leadership team that you really want to be. Um, but it, it would require commitment and time, but that could be pretty cool, I think, um, to work on. Um, I assume, last question, the budget's in pretty good order. I wouldn't be walking into, I had that once, a big deficit, and, a, and nobody's out there to say to me, you need to terminate person X. There are no, no problems like that. that you're <laughs> I, would, I would say, correct. Uh, but we may have some disagreements on council about that as well. Yes. So. There's been a lot of conversation about a fiscal cliff that's ever moving forward, so I'm not sure how much of that is to, um, there's been some uh, belief that maybe that's just to spur some conversation and maybe doing some additional revenue streams and getting that conversation out into the community. New uh, revenue streams, I'm sorry. Additional so, taxes. New and new types. Right. Um, in order to um, fix that fiscal cliff, but the fiscal cliff keeps putting itself out there and the community continues to give us additional funding. And so while we keep up with the spending of that additional funding pretty well, um, and that's of some concern, I don't think that there at this time is uh, dire financial inf stuff going on, uh, but there are some concerns about some different departments, some enterprise funds and some uh, certificate of participation. Uh, corporations that are out there and how they've been functioning for a long period of time. So um, while I don't, I don't, I don't think you're walking. Anybody would be walking into a quicksand in, in our budget right now. Uh, there are obviously concerns as there are for anybody else. 
And having said that, I don't think the group is looking to tax their way out of it. Uh, there's many different additional revenue streams we can bring in, and I think that that's what the group is looking towards, is things that are more enterprise-driven um, and, and business-oriented as opposed to um, raising revenues through taxes. That would certainly be always a last choice, I think, for everybody at the table. Um, so there's a lot we can do, and something that I think everybody's collectively agreed we need to explore, that uh, retreat that the mayor mentioned. We did a lot of um, spitballing there, and I think even had some great ideas that we can even take a little further. So uh, there's things on the table. We really just need to move forward on them. Well, thank you for your time. Um, You're welcome. Appreciate it. I, I think we've gone the full hour. Uh, we're hoping to make some preliminary discussions tonight but by Monday for sure I think we'll have a decision and we'll be voted on that night so we'll be in touch with you Mario will be in the meantime but appreciate your coming and sharing with us your your expertise you're welcome good luck to you uh, wish it had been a little sunnier day but it, it did cause me to come and drive around to Englewood I haven't done that before I, I just have to remark that it was so easy because your signs have that cool little logo on them. <laughs> you, three. you had mentioned that uh, she had reached out to you. How did you How did you know about the position? Through Maria. How, how do you know each other? I don't. Someone called Maria an advocate for me. Oh, okay. That was I don't even know who that is. Through the CCMA. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. She said that, so I didn't know. And I, I have already voiced to people at... Uh, I don't know if you know, town managers, the International City Managers Association has a program called Managers in Transition, a real program. Oh, okay. Because uh, it's an interesting profession where suddenly you're not employed anymore. Anyway, I had shared with them that I would be interested in, in interim. That's how your name came yeah. to us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, nothing but the best to each of you, and thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There, there are going to be folks out in the hall if you'd like okay. to sort of interact with public. Where there's cookies there, you can take some out. Oh, okay. Maybe we should move them out there. <laughs> okay, now there's going to be food. Can we take a? Should we take a quick break? Anybody? Five minutes, real quick. Sounds good. Yeah. Exactly on the oh, dot. No yeah. I write the time that we start. So. I, I see. And then actually start at 7 30. Yes. Okay. We, we have 20 minutes. So I can order some food from Tokyo Joe's and pick it up really quick? Yeah. I assume we just hooked it over there. Yeah. Is that your favorite spot since we're out here? For the local it's theater out here? No, I just, actually, that's my Monday night. I just pick it up because I, I can order it on my app here and pick it up sure. during break and bring it right back and point it down.
and then just we'll come, we'll talk to we'll chit chat after yeah. play roundabout. Yeah. And we like for them to do the scoring now, even if they don't want to talk, do your scoring, your yeah. preliminary scoring, so the things don't get mixed up in your head. That's my experience. I, yeah, I think because I, I wasn't thinking, we added the study session for next week. We weren't going to have one, but then we realized we probably this is going to be one for the next decision. If we can get this scoring done tonight, that would be better. Yeah. If you don't mind, I would ask you to do it now. So oh, it's fresh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I it's think it's the best way to do it. If yeah. you wait until yeah. so you have another candidate, it'll be already What did they say? Yeah. 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 It's better to do it. I'm, I'm already done. I do it as I go okay. on the question, so I have it fresh in my mind. So you have to go through with this. I don't you quite do, it. Yeah. You do this I do this for a living. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So, like, like, yeah, like, <laughs> like Mr. Cuesta asked me, did we uh, wait an hour and say, yes, we start at 6 or 5. And he's like, how do you know? I always write the time. I mean, I've done this before. Right. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> That's how I know. <laughs> so I do write, you know, I try to write everything. And Reed is out there too. Cheryl. That will help us because I don't want the, then the scoring be mixed with other candidates, with the other candidate. Linda, I want to know if you could sleep last night when you got home. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it sorry. was terrible. <laughs> I had to take some melatonin. I can't believe I did that. I just. Would you have caffeine? I had a she had tea. I had green tea. green tea, which I just responded. Oh, that's really. why you said that to me. Oh my like, Yeah, I I, co I almost could have a cup of coffee at night and do better than if I had. I don't know what it is, but hmm. yeah. I just so on the, on the scoring sheet, you have examples of what we were looking for on each one of the areas. Um, I'm sorry, I, we, we took a, a section out and I didn't. Shut the door and leave it open. Well, they're recording, oh, so it's it all public anyway. <laughs> it's all public yeah, anyway. it's all public record, so. Um, the rating scale, I didn't change it. We took a section out. I'm sorry, that was my mistake. So it's 5 to 9, 10 to 15, and 16 to 20. At the end, the rating okay. total. Because we took a section out, mm -hmm. so oh, yeah, um, if you have any questions, if you want to know anything, just ask me. But I mean, this is actually pretty self-explanatory. So the rating is five to twenty-five total, or it's five to section? Uh, it's five to twenty. It's, it's so each section is like One it's based five. on five points. Well, I okay, do that until I do all the interviews. Right. Yeah, I, I do the same thing. I do it during the interview. I go and rate it because I have the question right fresh, right there. No, actually, I'm, I mean, I want to do it after I hear both. Mm, is, is that's better? just my style, yeah. Better to rate each one and then come back to it because then you're comparing rather than, you know, mm. results. But yeah. you can do whatever you want. We all work <laughs> differently. Um, I think she said she took an hour. Okay, so so maybe it's really to 20. Okay, so there's... Four sections instead of five, right? Yes. Right. So, okay. That's so what I was saying. I didn't okay. change so the scale. Is is the we, we took one got section got out, and I didn't okay. change the sure. scale. So the scale would be five to nine, okay. ten to fifteen, and sixteen to twenty. Okay. Mine's yeah, pretty bad. Yeah, 
And just to clarify, um, I don't know Virginia at all. I, get, I, I got her name through ICMA. <laughs> right. That's what we said you were doing. So. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think Exactly. So, yeah. You got the names, and then you called them. I got the them. names from them, and then I contact them to get their paperwork. And sure. so I just wanted to clarify that. I think she clarified it pretty well. Okay. And I'm going to need those interview guys back, whether today or Monday, but I need them back. So we need to, we need to keep track of those. Which one? The interview the guys. Scoring yes. sheet. The scoring the, sheet. The whole the interview whole guy. The, the whole package, I need it back. You can keep the copies of the recommendation letters, but we need the interview package back. Tonight or, or Monday. Monday? I would prefer to have them tonight, mm -hmm. but I mean, we can, yep. we can do it on Monday night if you prefer that. I would prefer, again, we need to keep records of the interview guys. I'm glad to give it to you tonight. Me too. I can give you mine tonight. Yeah. I'll put them in the envelope. I'm keeping for more than mine. We're all using whole numbers, right? I'm not gonna say oh, you can use point five. You can, yeah, I whichever you prefer. So okay. It's a continuum, so it's, yeah. It's <laughs> not just don't do point two. Point two is okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. two five, point People will go to like three decimals, and I think that's way too much. Well, but I, 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 I don't now. think that we're, we're doing um, a, a score down on who is, is, and then they just pick. Right, 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 right. On who gets the highest score? I think he was joking. No, it'll be both. So if you <laughs> want to push somebody over the edge by the point two, okay. I suppose. You Let me try. think about it a little bit more. <laughs> You're free. Right. You're free with your little <laughs> right. numbers. <laughs> That's a, what it's what it means to you. Hey, you can count on me. I have a, a popsicle upstairs if you want it. I can go get it too. <laughs> Will you um? Give these back to us Monday night when we're having conversations. Yes, I can so bring them back. Can remember yeah. some of the no, 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 I can bring them back. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a problem. My memory is. Or For the time being, <laughs> I don't know them personally, so. Uh, yeah, I know, but I haven't seen him back, so. Yeah, they have my cell phone. I told them to call me if they get slow, so. Okay.
just uh, seven or eight minutes before the next person comes in, do we want to uh, make any adjustments or are things going well? Any clarifications on anything? I think it's going okay. And then we're going to discuss Monday, right? I, I think I'd, if, we, if we can talk a bit tonight while it's fresh, I think that would be good. But we did today set aside study session next on Monday. Then we would then, if we make a decision that we want to hire one of these two, we would bring it up and uh, vote on it in the regular meeting that night. Yeah, I think it adds value to talk about the candidates while they're fresh in your mind. So if we can spend 15, <coughs> 20 minutes maybe just getting a, a read in, uh, that would be helpful. If we need to go to Monday, which you probably will, and then we can make the final decision or discussion then. But let's see how it goes. As Amy says, I do, I do this for a living, so to me it's second nature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not all of us do this all the time. Still live streaming, right? Yeah. What are we doing? Hmm? What are we doing? Right now? Everybody's just scoring and then five minutes. They'll come in. Do you want to talk about it, Kennedy? No. Are you? We're live streaming, that's what she said. I asked if we're live streaming. I'm not sure. what oh. Are what are we doing right now? We're just scoring our sheets. The score scoring? Can we start the other interview if they're there? We sure could. Is there any? Are there, is anybody talking to him out there? Oh, no. I can I'm go get him. Fine with us getting started five minutes early. Then, everybody hey. okay with that? Anybody in? Works for me. Needing more time? Yes. All right. <laughs> like that enthusiasm. <laughs> Is it Wes or Wesley? Do you I, it doesn't. It's fine. Well, what you prefer? I, my uh, long, the long, uh, the long uh, use of the uh, my name is typically when I'm in trouble. So Wes is a more casual. Person. Okay, well then you're not in trouble from us. So Fantastic. Wes is great. <laughs> Wes, we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Linda Olson, Mayor, and represent District Two. I'm Rita Russell, Mayor Pro Tem. I'm an at-large. I'm Cheryl Wink, and I'm an at-large member. Cheryl. Cheryl. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. I just want to make sure to hear Cheryl land. So, <laughs> thank you. My name is Dave Queston. I'm at District Four. I'm Amy Martinez, and I'm a council member at large. Old Daniel Sierra, and I'm District One. Laura, Laura Barrington, District Three. Two as well, ma'am. Right, thank, thanks for coming and joining us tonight, so we can move on to this next stage for the city. We have about twelve questions or so that we're going to ask. The one last one being, do you have questions for us? Sure. And we're going to rotate through them. Um, hopefully, we'll have a good amount of time to cover them all in the hour, and still allow for you within that to have some questions. So, thank you. I'm going to start out with a question of describe your background and experience and what you think um, that experience does in terms of qualifying for this position at this point in time in your life. 
Sure. Um, I, so I've lived in Colorado a little over 20 years. I'm a transplant, um, but I have been doing local government experience uh, ever since I, I came to Colorado. So I started out the city, well, it wasn't the county then, it was just the city of Broomfield, and worked there for um, a few years and then uh, took over a finance director spot in, uh, in Lupton and then over to uh, Firestone where I uh, assumed uh, operations in the city manager's desk uh, for almost 10 years there. So several different uh, locations, um, and, um, and then of course my, you know, I, you have my resume. The um, the credentials speak for themselves, but that's not, I think, where um, the emphasis is. Just the ability to having been in different settings, to look at different operations, to look at how different uh, city governments or local governments um, uh, provide for their citizens in, in a variety of different roles, not just the city manager's desk, but uh, other roles as well. And then most recently, the last couple of years since having left the city manager's desk, I've been involved with my own um, personal consulting group. So primarily local governments, um, you know, city of Greeley, um, to help out with economic development issues and broadband, as well as uh, the town of Windsor, um, Frederick, um, I'm trying to think of other ones that I may have been engaged with, and then uh, water districts as well, and then also as well as uh, private, private land use developers, helping them try to navigate um, uh, land use planning issues. So I've seen it from both, actually, I've seen it from both sides. And it's interesting because when you've been a city manager, you've certainly engaged uh, the business community. Um, you, you do le uh, learn quite a bit about what that means. But I think you, you see it a little differently when you're on the other side too as well, trying to, from the outside, trying to figure out how to navigate those boxes and how to negotiate those components and how to reach you know, uh, fair and reasonable agreements. And so um, that's been an interesting, um, uh, an interesting perspective. Why this position at this time? Uh, so I have taken several years off, uh, like I said, doing my own consulting business. Um, I am ready to get back into local government management, um, and I think that an interim position is probably a good way to kind of sort that out. Uh, the city of Inglewood has a good reputation. I know you've had some issues, you know, lately, um, and that's fair, but um, by and large, I think it, um, it is a desirable place for a manager to be. Um, so um, it's, for me, it's a good place to, to try to get back into local government management. Thank you. Mayor yeah, Pertel's next. <clears throat> um, have you had experience in all areas of local government service? And if you have not had experience in certain areas, how would you approach management in those areas? Oh, I'm, I'm sure I don't have uh, experience in all, <laughs> in, all in all areas. Uh, I, um, I've had a, I, would, I believe it's a well-rounded um, position. A lot of what, I think a lot of what uh, you do is, is relationship uh, driven. So to the extent that you understand how, as well as it, it also is like a strategic puzzle. So to the extent that you understand how things come together to provide services, whether you do them in-house, you ha actually have in-house staff that does them, or you do them through IGAs or MOUs um, uh, is an important concept. And you can apply those as well. So if, you, if there's a, spe a specific area, I mean, I understand urban renewal authorities and DDAs and things like that from, uh, from some previous work. But if I didn't have um, uh, in that area, I think it's a matter of trying to understand, A, what, what is the entity about, what is its core function, and, and in particular, how does it influence and affect um, the other relationships or other um, obligations around it. So roll up your sleeves. Uh, there's certainly competent people here. Your staff has a good reputation, and I'm sure they could get you up to speed on those areas that um, you may not be most familiar with. But um, a lot of what, so some of the entities I've worked with, like when I was in Broomfield, they provided almost all the, all the services directly. Other entities I've worked through have done those through contractual um, basis, whether they be, you know, uh, IGAs uh, or uh, special districts for RAC <coughs> or fire or water or sewer, those kinds of things. Uh, one of the um, six sort of strategy areas that we work toward is um, we call infrastructure and the environment. And so I'm a little curious as to how you would approach managing this as an interim director within Englewood. For the infrastructure and the environment? As a, uh, as a whole? Uh, as a collective view into that a component of our strategy, yes. 
Yeah, so um, so it's, it's really interesting that you bring that up. I had the privilege of sitting in on a CDOT meeting uh, with Greeley just uh, last week. They are one of my contractual clients, and so the guy who was there was actually talking about um, he was in charge of how to implement new technology um, as it comes to infrastructure. And so I think there's some parallels here because it's not always about adding more asphalt or simply going after the same models that we've that we've done over and over and over. It's also about how they have a partnership with Google and Boulder, and they were trying to explore how they might further use existing assets or to think about those assets in ways that they've never thought about those assets before. And so they were looking at, for instance, he was giving us a really um, uh, a, a briefing kind of on this whole idea of what they're going to do with coupling, uh, probably starting next year, where they get these um, uh, giant tractor trailers and they actually have them six inches apart and they stretch on for just multiple multiple tra but the whole idea is how do we take this window from about 1 a.m. to about 4 a.m. and how do we use this existing asset but use it in a way we've never thought about and how do we integrate technology in that way to do that and and what that's going to then do for the capacity from for the rest of the day for all the the, the regular commuters and, and transit. So I think it's the same kind of thing. I think as we look at our environment, we have to think about stewardship uh, fundamentally. It doesn't get any more complicated. Um, or than how, do, how are we stewards? Like, how, how, what are we going to do? Um, and we're entrusted with this. So how do we integrate that in, in a way that's, um, that's proactive and, and works for the community? Because it has to meet needs. It can't go off in tangents where we're not meeting citizens' needs, but it, it can also be responsible. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. So I think it's how we try to figure out what those look like. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Please give an example of when you initiated a change in process or operations in response to customer feedback. And within that, if you could touch on how you determined this change was necessary, the outcome of that change, and the feedback you received on that okay, change. Okay, so the CERT needs to work the other way. I need to be saying CERT to you. So. <laughs> no problem. You can go both ways. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's a good question. Uh, an example of what that might be um, in, in some of the places I've been. Um, well, there certainly has been. So we looked at, um, once, uh, so uh, there were two lar very large annexations I worked on as a city manager. One was a 1,300-acre um, um, uh, annexation. That was actually already zoned and was brought in. The other was, a, was, a, was an annexation prior to that that, was, that dealt with, um, it was going to be a, a gun range out there or was proposed gun range, but it had all this open passive space and there were some questions about whether that was the best use. One of the things we learned, I think, through that, and we had packed, like we had multiple planning and zoning meetings, just packed rooms, and a lot of, um, we were kind of pushing up into an area that was largely rural and had been uh, zoned agriculture. One of the things I think we, we, uh, we realized on the heels of it when we got done was we probably hadn't spent the time we needed to defining specifically um, uh, our intent in the comp plan and, and further defining elements of the code that probably should have been articulated. You know, uh, it, it was a pretty um, <coughs> fast or rapid growing community. And one of the things you, you know, you, you kind of put out the, the fires first and sometimes you have to go back and go, hey, we could probably grow up a little bit in this area. There, there's room to talk about how to improve what our zone looks like, what our um, master plan looks like, and then how we communicate that out and then how do we um, form those relationships with our neighbors that would otherwise allow this to not been so contentious. Um, so after several rather heated public and uh, our planning commission meetings and then actually board board meetings. Um, I think we learned and we actually used a lot of that when we went to do the larger annexation some four or five years later is to kind of think a little more critically about what that looks like and, and how it could be a benefit um, to the community as opposed to just a, a launch and grab kind of effort. So. Very good. Thank you. My turn. Uh, tell me about one time you were able to improve the morale of an unmated, unmotivated employee or coworker, <laughs> or when you were able to get them excited about something that they weren't originally excited about. Yeah. So I'll. Uh, I like to define the difference between management and leadership this way. Management is focused on processes. So how do you improve processes, and you know how do you create efficiencies, or how do you create um, uh, uh, just 
the best, most efficient delivery of the service. Leadership really is a fundamentally about influence, whether you do it to, to, to the bad. You know, there's actually bad leadership that's actually effective because it does what it what it's intended to do. And there's good leadership. It's when you're able to influence people and, and call them to something greater than what they could do themselves. And I think when that works well, it's your ability to, and you don't have to have a title. It doesn't mean you have to wear the CEO title or whatever title. It just means your ability to, 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 to kind of influence people. And I think fundamentally at the end of the day, when leadership works well, and when you as, uh, as someone who's tasked with providing leadership, when you know you're working well, it's when, you're ha when you have that capacity to, and you have that ability to influence um, um, people. Uh, probably one of the, um, the things I, I enjoy the most, in fact, we, I'm not sure if you, um, who here had read maybe perhaps example of the um, oil and gas explosion that happened in Firestone. Um, that was there. Well, the, one of the men that were killed in that incident was a guy who worked for me and who um, we had kind of had our eye on, and we were trying to work to develop to kind of come in and become second in, in charge there at, at the public works facility. And uh, I mean, it was personal. It was a personal loss to me because it was a friend. But more important, that, or, or equally important to that as well, was the fact that we had invested and we, we had a chance to help develop someone. Um, who really had a, had a thirst and had a hunger to, to, um, to work in the community, live in the community, and to provide services in the community. Um, but when you first met him, when he first came on board, he um, uh, just pretty casual, you know, not sure what he wanted out of it, but to see him kind of rally to that um, over time and, and to invest and to really say, we're going to spell out specific training and, and dollars. I'm personally going to spend time from me meeting with a group of supervisors and, and trying to invest in conversations and figure out what they want and, and what, what interest and appetite lies there. Um, so this was a coworker of yours or a friend? No, it was a coworker. Okay. Um, it was a young man who worked <coughs> in our public works facility. Okay. Um, and just, again, trying to develop um, in him to, to, to try to call out to say, if you have an interest and you, and you want to develop inside this organization, we have room for people like you. We want you to have a seat at the table, and we want you to contribute in, um, in that in that way. So, how did you kind of do that? Was it through like mentorship or discussion? Or uh, well, what, there's what no actually? yeah. So, there, I think there's a formal and informal piece. I think the formal piece is how do we steer specific. Uh, targeted training dollars to you. Um, so we had this area within Public Works, and in in, he was interested in, in water and water treatment. And so, how do we move him through to get his certifications, to get his to get his training? But in this case, this was um, w w we began to see a need there to develop second tier managers. And so, one of the things we were intentionally trying to do was recruit people, not just top tier, but also that that next, that subsequent, and and tertiary tier of managers and so I was trying to create quarterly quarterly meetings and quarterly efforts to invite those people to larger discussions and you know formal discussions and leadership discussions that, that go on as well as me just sometimes taking these people to lunch and sitting around and just saying okay what what questions have you got what is this you're interested in and me showing an interest in, in where they were at and what they were doing and how I might be of service to that. I think it takes both. I think it, it takes intentional formal, and I think it takes the informal connection as well. Good evening. Is it Mr. Levanti? Yes. All right. Thank you. So uh, <clears throat> my question is, uh, can you tell me about a time when you anticipated an issue or a conflict between coworkers at work and took action to address the situation before it escalated? And what was your role? Um, how did you identify the issue? What actions did you take? Um... Yeah, so we went through, I, I, I think the, the biggest example is um, one of the things uh, that I rec uh, that when I was a uh, city manager, one of the things we identified was the need. I, at one point, there was like, oh, 10 or 11 direct reports coming to my desk, and that wasn't, you weren't able to provide the kind of feedback and the kind of direction um, that you need to. So we went through this um, this reorganizational where we changed the, the structure uh, significantly. And so when you have to tell people they don't have as much access to your desk as what they have historically had, that can be a little tr uh, tricky to navigate. And so um, you could tell the friction was coming in particular in, in, my, in the finance and administration area. And actually, the gentleman who was there had, um, um, had actually um, been a mutual acquaintance before he actually came there. So I kind of had a little bit of a personal relationship there. And so I literally went out of my way to set him down to say, hey, 
this doesn't have to be a conflict between you and this other person who's not going to take this position over you and who will report directly to my desk. And I know that there's been some um, some conversations. Um, uh, I, uh, if, it, if we don't begin to intervene and to get our head in the right places, it's going to get, it's going to get ugly. So here's my expectations. Here's where we're headed. Here's why I made the decision that I made. It was a tough decision, but here's my justification for doing that. And in order for you to be successful in your position and me to be successful in my position, we got to figure out how we're now going to still navigate this so you have all the resources you need, you have adequate resource and you get direct feedback, but you're going to get it in a more timely fashion because you're not waiting for some, you know, for my desk to clear or for my calendar to clear, uh, clear so you can get on that agenda. But he was, um, he was a pretty energetic guy and he could get a little wound up. So it was getting in front of that before that, that confrontation happened with the person who was going to assume that position um, ahead of him. So. Good. Thank you. Hi. Um, what experience do you have with uh, finance administration? Uh, I've served as a finance director in two different local governments. Um, I've been in, uh, as, a, as a part of that, I've been involved with budget processes, audit processes. Um, I served on the Colorado um, CSAFE uh, Local Government Investment Board. They managed uh, about $1.2 billion of, of uh, local government funds uh, on a short-term basis. Um, How much more detail on that. I provided my. I've uh, yeah. I've probably done. I don't know how many budgets. Fifteen or so budgets over over my career, or been intimately involved with those kind of budgets. Um, I've sat on. I've also sat on other boards. You know, sewer boards and other kinds of uh, local government boards myself, and been involved um, from uh, uh, the budget discussion and budget um, policy formation as well. Thank you. Um, how do you approach the planning process? What, in particular, what kind of systems do you use? How do you think about it? Set objectives, set priorities. <coughs> Land use planning, or I, I'm thinking refer- more generally, oh, but okay. you could oh, give that oh, just, as an example oh, okay. too. Yeah. Um, but you can certainly use land as an example. Oh, sure. No, that's fine. I'm just thinking best. Um, so, I think the sweet spot for. Uh, uh, a local government manager, whether you're this, uh, the CEO or whether you're on a management team, is the forward-looking piece. So it's, um, I tell people probably um, one of the documents that has um, the most influence in any budget is probably your capital improvement plan, especially if you have a good one that you've tried to uh, think out or to, to give some prudence and, and some thought to. And the reason I use that as an example is because when you begin to think about most of the projects we do that have long-term impact typically don't start magically on January 1 and magically end on December 31. Um, they at least straddle two years and quite often when we take major initiatives under task and when we think about really what the shape and function as a community looks like it's not just a 12 month or 13 months or 15 months you're talking three five sometimes seven when you get out to ten it gets a little starts getting a little um, um, great but you still need to be wrestling with what those look like so I think to the extent that you're engaged thinking about if we're going to unpackage this issue whether it's a DDA project or an urban renewal project or it's a massive you know, um, uh, annexation um, internally to organizations as well to structure insight as we grow or as we downsize or as we see obstacles coming up. Are we thinking about what that what our plan might look like and what are those incremental steps that are going to help us get from where we're at to where we need to go? Can be some of the most can, can be some of the best use of your time. The problem is is frequently as managers we're on to the most urgent item and the most um, the thing that's calling the hardest or the thing that's in the biggest crisis or the thing that's you know that's either yelling the loudest you know um, for whatever reason that's where 80 percent of our time goes to but it it, it is the ability to stop and to think and then to gather people in the room and to have good open conversations about what people see are opportunities what people see as constraints um, and then, how, and then, how, and the best best paths um, spent moving forward um, are are really good. One of the things that we did, I, f- I felt really helpful, is we um, actually developed this operation plan that we would present to council right on the heels of budget adoption. That said, okay, you've adopted the budget. This is how we're going to implement uh, this, this. In Frederick, yeah, uh, in Firestone, yes. Firestone. This is how we're going to implement that. And so, one of the things we did, we met on a quarterly basis, and we would just 
update our board on where we're at. But what we did behind the scenes as a management team was even, I felt like it was more even more beneficial is because we began to look at in, how these things integrate together, how they affected various departments and how um, they were interconnected. And it also gave us a chance to actually then forward look to say, well, if this is what we're doing, then what, then what in fact is the next step to, to implement this? What's the two-year or three-year or four-year? What's the implication that we're trying to accomplish here? And we probably twice a year when we were doing things really well would actually meet off-site as a management group, and we would review that, and we would also then um, kind of really start trying to look forward about, okay, so I'll just pick on public safety. So public safety, this is where we're at now. You understand what the board's direction is and what their vision is this area. What does that look like, not just this year, but two and three and four years? And more importantly, how does that affect the rest of the department and how does that affect the community? And um, aside from the camaraderie that was built from, from doing that, I think there was not only the challenge for, for people in their own areas to begin to look up and look out, but I think it also had this cross appreciation from, from various departments to go, yeah, I guess, I guess when I'm making my own plans, there, there are things that impact, there are things that, that, that or, or there are synergies that can, be, that can be picked up on as well. Um, so I, I'm never the brightest guy in the room. I think to the extent that you thrive is, is getting good people around you and rustling through and vetting good ideas, having good conversation, creating clear expectations, not, you know, not um, you know, good civil discourse where you encourage different perspectives and at times even disagreement, but with the common objective of trying to get to a good place and produce something that's of value. And um, that, that's, that's my take. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> how do you view the relationship between the administrator and the governing body, and how do you view your relationship with department heads and local government staff? Boy, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Did you draw the short straw on that one? Or you <laughs> no. Um, so, so, so here, look, fundamentally at the end of the day, um, I believe strongly that it works well both directions. So it goes, works like this and works like this like this. It fundamentally is about trust and respect, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have disagreements. It doesn't mean you don't struggle with things. It doesn't mean that there, everything doesn't always work perfectly or all the chinks in the armor are perfectly aligned. But what it says is when we come at each other and we say we're going to create an environment, we're going to work our tails off to create an environment where there's trust and respect that works both ways. So from the manager's desk up um, to the council's, um, or from the manager's desk, you know, across or whatever, or maybe even down with it. It fundamentally has to be about trust and respect. And how do we engage that? How do we promote that? How do we encourage that? How do we call it out when it's not happening? How do we circle back around and get the feedback and to say, hey, what is it going to take to earn this, to build this? Because they're like wedges you put in place. And, and so how do we do that? Are we taking the time? Are we, are we interested in engaging on that level? It's going to take vulnerability that, that never happens without some vulnerability. Um, it certainly doesn't happen without empowering people, whether it's coming down empowering people or coming across by empowering. You're going to have to empower people, but fundamentally it's about trust and respect. And so you would see me, I hope, um, there would be, um, uh, you know, my intent, whether serving here or some other places, how do I help create that trust and respect value and whether civil discourse where we're engaged on issues, where we're vetting them out. Sometimes that has to be done. We're airing them out. Um, we have feedback on that, um, and then we we circle back. But it also ha happens from the manager's desk. As a manager, you have to exude that. When you engage your department heads or your supervisors or your staff, there has to be that. You have to grant and pursue with everything you have um, trust and respect. So um, I think when you do that, it takes a while. It's not a magic, it's not like fairy dust that sprinkles over and, you know, magically makes everything better. Um, but it, when you pursue that and you do, do it day in and day out, I'm just a believer in good things will happen on that. Not perfect things, but good things. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And uh, to what extent do you believe that contact with the citizenry and groups among citizens is important? A follow-up is how then do you typically handle this responsibility? Zero. Just absolutely zero. <laughs> you know, f we're here to serve. I mean, it really functionally is servant leadership. Okay, let's not, you know, when we do it well, it's about servant leadership. And so when we understand that, um, uh, I think it, it kind of, it, it's just a different paradigm. Um, 
Now, it's hard work, okay? You've got to roll up your sleeves. It gets messy. You know, everybody you meet and engage doesn't necessarily um, maybe have the same opinion or the same perspective or, you, you know, again, you don't have necessarily fairy dust that you can, you know, sprinkle to, to solve all their issues. But I think if you can express genuine concern when you engage staff or citizens, I'm genuinely interested in hearing you out. I'm genuinely trying to, interested in trying to figure out what, what, what's at the core of your issue. And to the extent I can, which you can't always, is there something I can proffer or offer to you that, um, that may remedy this? It may not be what they thought. It may not be what they want at times. But I'm doing my best to try to engage you, to hear you out, to see what the concern is, and then to proffer something that's of worth back to you. And I think that's the sweet spot. That's what you aim for. You don't always get it, but I think that's what you aim for. Um, I certainly, I certainly don't mind public meetings, but I really like one-on-ones. And I, you know, I mean, there's only so many hours in the day, and you have to be, you know, you got to calendar your time right. But I think intentionally going after people. Um, I had a guy um, who was in the community I was at, and he had been probably the bane of existence of many boards before me and he just he, he just had this thing in his axe and it, it wasn't going to get turned and i remember um there was an older gentleman who got elected to my board who just really had a heart for this guy he lived right across the street from him and he's just like this guy is he literally worked for the nsa just an absolute brilliant guy doing top secret stuff but he was very reclusive and he just had a real heart for this guy like West, there's got to be a way we can reach him. I'm like, George, you and every other council person before you for a, literally a decade have never been have never been have never been able to get him. He's like, no, I, I refuse to accept that. And so um, we worked at it and we worked at it. And finally, finally, we one day I convinced him. I said, I really want to hear. No, you don't want to hear. I said, I will buy you lunch on my dime, not on the city's dime. I will take cash out of my own wallet. We will go to some place, some offbeaten place, and we're going to sit in a booth, and you're going to tell me really what what's on your heart and mind. And um, this, is a, this is an extraordinary example. Every, every, diff, every difficult uh, one I dealt with didn't turn out this way, but the guy actually wind up getting involved and volunteering. And um, I don't know what the switch was other than at some point between myself and that elected official, this guy actually felt like he got heard, and he actually was able to vet his, his, his grievance on it. And I, I look back and go, that's when it works well and when sometimes you get lucky, that's what, that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, so he served on volunteer commissions and, and, and stuff like that, but it was a, it was a, sweet, it was a sweet place to be. Not all of them ended that way, though. <laughs> uh, okay. What experience have you had working on an intergovernmental or interagency basis? How have you worked directly with the state or federal governments, councils of government, and other units of local government? Oh, wow. Um, so we, uh, one of the things that was important to the community I last uh, worked in was uh, transportation down I-25. And so there were two groups, uh, two coalition groups that were driven by the North Metro a chamber of Commerce uh, to work on a variety of things. Tolling was one, and then lane expansion. And so there was an integration with CDOT, and and um, and then I think um, RTD. Some of the RTD staff was at the table as well, but looking for solutions and looking for funding alternatives. And then, frankly, at some point, uh, lobbying the state legislature to provide additional funds um, for that north from I think it was 88th up initially to Highway 7, and then at some point uh, from Highway 7 up to. Um, up to Berthoud and in Loveland. And so um, that was probably one of the most recent examples of being involved with um, that level. I've certainly um, uh, been involved with, uh, well, actually, when I was on the North Metro Chamber Board, um, I was a part of their legislative arm, and so we would be at the state capitol um, lobbying on a variety of bills that affected the Chamber of Commerce and um, uh, uh, things of that nature. Uh, we had a number of IGAs in the area. You know, well, one of the things that was a challenge when I, when I first came in was uh, some of those IGAs had not been, oh, um, it had not been the TLC applied to them that probably um, needed to be. And so there was an opportunity to come alongside of, some of them actually didn't even exist, but <coughs> the ones that did, um, just to, to sit down with people and say, okay, how do we make this work? How do we make this work well for your agency and the demands and constraints that you have? How do we make this work for the agency that I serve? And trying to form those um, relationships that were um, that were critical to do that. So whether it was um, the rec district or the fire district, in particular, were the ones and in the school district were the ones that that needed probably the most TLC. But um, uh, working on those, 
um, we were part of Dr. Cog, but uh, that was uh, typically um, a liaison from our board that did that. But to the extent that it affected staff, we certainly wrapped ourselves around what that looked like and, and how we could partner um, uh, to the extent that was applicable. Excellent. Thank you. All right. This one's a two-part question. Uh, what will your first steps be upon assuming responsibility for this position? And what can we do to make sure your first three months are successful? <laughs> um, so I'm so I'm a believer. I think there are two different. Uh, I personally have two different ways of managing, or I'm sorry, functioning as a manager. So one of them is getting reports. So you got to familiarize yourself and just get in and crunch and read. I think the other thing is is I like to walk around and observe and to just engage people. And I think informal conversations and informal discussions really help fill in the gaps between what you get in a written report or what you get off of what you read someplace. So there, there would be an extensive effort on my part to spend, to really discipline myself and my calendar to say I will spend a lot of time getting to know as many people as I can, hearing their perspective, hearing their story, whether that extends to the council, whether that extends to the community, or whether that extends to my personal staff. So um, one of the things I really admired, a good friend of mine took over the city manager or desk in uh, Longmont, Colorado, Colorado, Harold Dominguez. And I remember I was a city manager to an adjacent nearby city, and I was like, Harold, are you ever going to sit down and have coffee with me? And he took me week. He said, Wes, I was deliberate. I went through ad nauseum, and I met with so many people internal to that organization and um, internal to that community. That's where my calendar um, that's what was most important to me. I wanted to hear from them. I wanted to try to understand them, and I wanted to try to, to gain a perspective that I could only uh, gain um, on meeting with them. And I, I thought to myself, if I ever get another chance to do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to model that. I'm really going to say that's, that's perspective. You, you'll have, here's, the, here's the great thing. You guys got good staff more than likely they're still doing a good job. So it's not like there's some giant hole out back where there's a giant sinkhole and everything's just kind of sucking down into it. Um, and I don't mean to say there's not issues to, to tackle, but the cool thing is, is because that's probably running in a decent place, you can roll up your sleeves and really try to invest on the relationship side of things, whether it's in the community, whether it's at the council level, or whether it's at the staff level to say, I want to sit down, I want to make this intentional, I want to be present. So when you're talking, I don't want to be reading a report and typing in my text and, and picking up. I really want to engage and to understand uh, who these people are, um, what they've been through, what they, what their perspective is on where the organization's at, where the community's at, you know, whether they've been here, you know, I don't know, 12 months, you know, five years, whatever that is. What, what does that look like? And what do they have to offer? What's their advice to me? What's their advice to, um, and, and, and what to look for, what to think about uh, on how to be challenged? And so I'd be most, I'd be most interested in that. Um, there's certainly going to be things here. I know you guys got some vacancies you got to wrestle through and, and try to fill. There's going to be things like, like that to think about. I think it's also engaging the council to say, okay, of all the things that can be worked on, let's make a realistic le list. Let's create realistic expectations. Um, let's have mutual conversation about what that looks like. Let's have regular feedback, and then let's uh, um, let's have some accountability on that, and then let's let's plot a plan moving forward. And um, I think if you get to a place where you create that reasonable list with those reasonable expectations, you set defined terms and defined expectations, you have good feedback, and you do it, like I said again, with trust and respect. I think some, I think some good stuff can happen in, inside 90 days, 120 days. Again, there's no fairy dust, but sure. good, stuff, good stuff can happen. I'm okay. convinced of it. Thank you. So. All right, since we have a little bit more time, I wonder if there's any follow-ups on any of these oh, before please. we ask. Uh, there's a little bit of time for that if anybody has any follow-ups on any of them. I think I have one. Oh, sure, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, in, in the question we asked just about uh, time when you anticipated an issue or conflict, um, and you reorganized departments, which is a big change. We've uh -huh. gone through that here, too. Yes, uh, what, what did you learn about what was important to the organization in that process? Wow. Um, that's good. Um, I, so there are some good things. So uh, I think the hardest, so for me, the one thing that, that I really, that came home to roost for me was um, there's two sides of the coins when it comes to change. Um, and, some, and sometimes as a manager, you have a particular perspective, like I got this global vision and it's here and I've tried to meet it out. We beat this thing up, but how does that extend all the way down through the very, I mean, like, you know, through every uh, nuanced part of the organization. And I think, 
I came away from that going, um, wow, sometimes you don't really, you think you know, but you really don't know what that looks like. But I think the other part of it, too, is sometimes you have to have the courage. And I think if you work hard, sometimes you have to go to people and say, hey, I've worked hard to build trust and credibility. I need you to come with me. And I know you... I know you don't understand it all, and you, you may not, but I, I want you to let me spend one of those credibility chips. And I think to the extent that you do a good job of that, and when I did, it worked well, and in some areas where I didn't, it kind of, I'm like, uh, I, you know, I could have done a better job communicating or spending the time necessary to do that. Um, but change is a tough thing, and I think you just have to be there for people as you navigate that to say, you know, look, inherently, life is change. Are we going to embrace it and make the best of it and make it work? Or are we going to be obstinate to it? And there are people who are cancers at times, and you have to have those conversations. But most people aren't. Most people just want some sort of appreciation for how is this going to affect me, and how is this going to affect the world that I operate in, and how is this going to affect my ability to provide either provide service or provide for my family. And I think when you, to me, that those were some good lessons, some things I got right at times, and some things I probably didn't and, and needed to grow through. When you got it right, it sometimes what do you think you did to get it right? Um, yeah, that's a good one. So I, th I think when you created that pathway for people where they, they understood and had opportunity to buy in and to help shape that to the extent possible um, or to at least have a chance to be heard out, um, it, it went well. And I think when it didn't, or some of the people you were relying on to help you, probably maybe you didn't create those expectations or you didn't follow up to make sure that was getting done, it, it, it didn't work so well. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anybody else have follow up to anything? All right. Let me go ahead with the. <clears throat> so my question is actually what questions do you have for us? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you actually, she actually asked me the great question, which I think um, it's like what, given, um, you know, given uh, your previous manager's depart, uh, departure, given where you're at, um, what do you guys think as a group is, go is important to focus on in the next 90 days? And what, what is going to make the, whoever he or she is that, that's helping you lead that charge, what, what ingredients, not personality, but what kinds of things is it going to take for them to be successful um, to navigate? So actually, that's a good question. Actually, I would like to defer to uh, oh, of course. Council Member Cuesta because I did like your answer. From my particular perspective, we did just have the departure of uh, City Manager Eric Keck. Uh, we'll be taking on an interim, and then call it six, eight months from now, however sure. that shakes out, we'll potentially bringing on another manager. I think really a, a steady hand, uh, stability was a term used by some of my fellow council members here. I think that's great as well. Um, w we do want people to feel secure in what they're doing day to day, that they know the direction that we're going in, that they're getting support from the top down, and that we're hoping that we can, that's reciprocated. Uh, so that is really, I think, going to be a key, a key component for me, is just knowing that day to day, things are running as they should. Um, there's plenty of things that we can look to improve on. There's some good ideas from council member uh, Sierra, um, Mayor Wilson touched on a couple as well during the prior interview. So there's improvements we can make along the way. But I think more than anything else, just making sure day-to-day -day operations are functioning smoothly, everybody knows that things are in order, and then we just keep chipping away at those areas we can make improvements. And that's to the next 90, sure. 120 days, as you referenced there. And I'll build on that. Um, I won't get into the other things yet, but I, I think he's really right, the stability, the even-handedness, and the sense that what our staff and our professional folks are doing really does matter and that they're not just stuck and waiting for something but they actually get to do their professional work and do something that contributes to a community overall um, I, I would I, that's what I really want for them and hope for them and that whoever is leading will, will make sure that that's happening I do have a few specific things but I'll let others jump in with I think someone who uh, really embodies the director part of the title more than the interim part of the title, even though it is set out to be a temporary position, um, meaning uh, a, an eye to the position or a heart to it, in, in better words, that, that has lasting positive benefit, lasting benefit all around for the city, for the, the 
the administration and um, all, all the all the entities you, you, you impact, right? And uh, I'd like to see that certainly in in the person who fills this role, sort of. Unlike that substitute teacher that comes <laughs> in and reads no, from that fair. chapter and goes home, but sure. right, it, it's a, I've done it before. I've certainly <laughs> hired people into that position before, and it's there's a, a dualism that one has to manage and balance, and sort of in a delicate dance, you know, you're not here forever, or maybe you can be here forever. It, it depends, right? It's unknown to start, um, but it's such an all-encompassing position, so. There's really no scaling back, so how do you navigate that? It's interesting. I was helping a community to the north on an interim basis. They had had a manager who had departed, and they had kind of brought me in to do some wraparound services. And it's interesting to see inside the organization who just wants to hunker and who's scared. Like, hey, can, do we really have permission to, to, to move forward? Like, other than just, you know, slide the little right. paper under the desk and, and run down the hallway and be real quiet. Like, but do we have permission to engage and engage at the level we know we should be, that we're called to be, but we're not quite sure what all this means because the person who just left had been, I think in that case, he had been there eight or nine years. And so there was a lot of institutional history there. And so it's like, well, do we have do we really have permission to work up and to roll up our sleeves and work on stuff? Or is this just kind of, no, let's just, let's just, you know, let's not, you know. Um, so, yeah. And so in your saying that, <laughs> and in reference to what uh -huh. I just said, I think we've both highlighted the, the point of communication exactly. in all of its formats and forms. So that's going to be a central piece in the success of this role for all of us. Mm -hmm. I guess one thing I want to add to that, and, and it goes, um, didn't mention, or oh, I did mention this aspect earlier, obviously that there's room for improvement here within the city. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's uh, processes and, and things that we can improve on. But while we work on the change in leadership, I guess first and foremost going to the stability aspect of it is that I want to make sure that the people that are representing the city, that work for the city, are looking forward to coming to their job day after day. Um, that's a concern that I have with uh, just the, the respect that they have for the uh, previous city manager. So if, if we could just build on just making sure that our uh, employees do want to come and serve the city, uh, that, that would be top of mind for me. Along with yes, ma'am. I, I want to hear from the, you. Uh, <laughs> the employees wanting to come here, we yes, want to make sure that they, the job of representing and serving the community is utmost so that the citizens feel like they can come here and get their job done too, and that they feel respected and served and that that's the purpose there. So um, I, I think that's important to really address what we do well and uh, to celebrate that, but not to hide or stick our head in the sand from things that are not going well, because that elephant in the room is very obvious to the citizens. And if they don't feel that they're being heard and their issues being vetted, then all we do is have them continually sitting in the seat every two weeks to try to get heard. Sure, and sure. they get louder and louder and louder until they believe they're getting heard, similar to the story that you were talking about. And so you either deal with it or you run, and those, those things don't happen. So then that doesn't make the employees feel comfortable, and it certainly doesn't make the citizens feel that they're being served or listened to, so then it just keeps escalating. And it's important for uh, that respect and that service to go both ways. And I think that that, I mean, I served on council before in the early, from 2003 to 2007, and that city manager, I think, was here for 17 years. And um, I think that there was um, it's a lot more longer-term employees, and we've had some turnover with that. So creating a culture where you have that kind of respect, understanding, professionalism for what people are supposed to be doing and then I think that the citizens can respect that because they know they come in and they get their business taken care of in an <coughs> equitable, fair, uh, timely manner. And they generally don't keep showing up then because they, <laughs> they get their job done. So I, I think when you have that kind of turnover where you've had, I don't know, we've had a lot of directors and when you've, uh, in the last four years, changeover, when you've had a lot of changeover and a lot of that from retirements and different, uh, different issues, but quite a bit of it over the last four years. And so you want to make sure that you have some of that stability that he's talking about, but also um, make sure that the, um, 
it doesn't create some situation where it's us and it's not an us and them situation. We're here to serve, like you said before. So, and an interim, you and you you feel pretty strongly an interim manager can do that. They can engage and do that. I, yes, I, okay. I do. I think that I I think that um, when you stop trying to um, protect, mm -hmm. when you stop running and turn around and address the issues, that usually there's a conversation that can happen similar to what you and the council member did with that person. That once you sit down and, and realize get past the little vetting of the situation, which I'm sure can be a little rough, <laughs> which I know is rough because I've been there. But once you, once you get past that, that, awesome. that you go, there is some common ground and some ways to, to resolve those issues instead of creating more chaos. Yes, ma'am. And I, I agree with the stability piece. I think that uh, would be really good. There are some issues that we need to deal with and, and we're working on that. We're, uh, the budget comes up for first reading um, next Monday. Um, also, we have the citizens really want the code enforcement issues addressed. And, and so I think those are some things that we probably do need to address sooner rather than later. Um, so those are some of the things important. that I would okay. like to see done. I think you're in a, you or anyone would be in a unique position to have fresh eyes mm -hmm. uh, from the outside, not knowing very much and coming in and, and just kind of doing the walkabouts and reading. Um, and I would hope that in, even though it's a short amount of time, we could get some perspective that could be really useful because there's no, you know, not necessarily skin in the game for you particularly. Right. You can be really bold and honest. Um, but I, I think Mayor Pertin mentioned the code piece. We we're in the middle of some increasing some staffing there and we need a plan we need a little stronger plan and we have some infrastructure issues that we also need a plan for we have some funding over time kinds of things that we could use some fresh thinking about or some courageous conversations um, and we need to have those uh, and we could start those now because we're going to be the council that works on it for the next year anyway so regardless but well, and it can be. I mean, I, I, you know, I've seen I've seen it done before, and I think to the extent that there is not only the permission but the encouragement to engage and say, "Hey, we have this asset, or I'm sorry, we have this personnel person we're bringing in. Let's let whoever he or she is that finds it being your fit here. How do we tap that to do some things we may never have it, or not never, but we may it may be a while before we have a chance to do. What are some specific things we can tackle during this interim besides helping? get a recruiting firm and going through all the steps that you know that typically happens but that's just a little piece of it like what are some really some things that we should, could focus on or some things that are unique to focus on during this interim time that we might otherwise not be doing or or, or whatever and I, it, it, it really is I watched Windsor do it when I was up there you know they were very curious about the organization so that was very important for them well we had this one report we're not real sure what do you think of it and just to be able to go engage that and so in that case it's really about how do we take Take this set aside time because we're all we all know we're here and how are we deliberate with it and and, and, and how are we intentional with that and I think you're I think you're very much right mayor I think that that's a it's kind of a unique place to be and it can be a good thing if it's if it's applied and done well so, yeah. I, think, I, think, yeah. I was gonna yes, say it, it's yeah. gonna be a unique position to be in um, the interim and I think it's gonna be really important to understand sure. the changes our community has been going through and is currently going through that's really gonna impact you know um, the person in this position quite a bit. Uh, but I do also think um, having a fresh perspective is gonna be, I mean, you're gonna have the advantage in that, that um, you're, you're coming in with really not a whole lot of like baggage or backstory to take a look at things. So with that, um, you know, to be upfront and honest with us about things that you think could be improved um, sure. and, and whatnot. But I also think, you know, the importance of uh, the humanity aspect and really giving our staff support that they need. I think that's going to be really uh, important as well. I do think council will have to do some pretty serious work in, in discussing what it is exactly we're going to ask for this position to achieve in the next 30, 60, 90 days, um, just so we're all on the same page and we can be clear with our expectations. So I think we still have some work to do there, but of course. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. Sounds like you guys are, are willing to do that and, and, and ready for that. So yeah, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good thing. It's encouraging. So. 
What else do you, what other <laughs> questions might you have? I, I've kind of got them, uh, I've kind of got them serotypically here, but um, I, I appreciate that. No, good, just that there's a, I think for me, it's like, like look, fundamentally, there, there are things that all of us can do, um, and I think if we're going to, to work together, it's do we really have a willingness to do that? And I think to the extent that, that there's the willingness, and I, I sense that I think good stuff happen when you don't have it it's just it's it's tough but um, the willingness to roll up sleeves the willingness to put stuff behind and the willingness to press forward for the good of the community man it sounds great and didn't that just sound good coming off my tongue <laughs> it's a lot of hard work um, you know from your teaching and you know in leadership development it's it's the, the, it's great to, to to say you can do some good but man it, it, it's it, it's hard work but you know what when you do it um, and you do it, and it turns out well. It's also it's also a special thing too. So um, it can be a special thing. This is a pretty special community. So we, yeah. we all I think feel like it's a duty and a, and a privilege to serve it and make sure it continues. Anything else that you no, wanted to add? It's good. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and engage. I appreciate your um, your willingness to do that. I certainly wish each of you the best of luck as you try to. Um, uh, come to a consensus on who who needs to um, who needs to uh, who needs to sit in the chair um, and so many times it's really about fit you probably get enough can candidates with advanced degrees and and those kind of things but finding that person who has the fit is uh, ever so um, subjective but ever so critical in and in, um, in, in moving the organization forward so I certainly wish you guys the best of luck in that all right thank you so <laughs> much you. take care driving back to Probably Frederick <laughs> thank you Thank you so much. Yeah, the, the cookies are out there still. <laughs> yeah, feel free to take a quick break and come back and score and.
everybody done? Everybody ready? Do we want to have discussion? Do we want to talk about it? Take on. I'm ready to discuss. Good. You're ready to discuss? Yeah. Is there a way to unlock that door but then have it be closed so that people can get back okay. in? It's just awkward to have a conversation. I can, if I know how to unlock oh. it, I try. <laughs> Yes, yeah. We'll continue the live streaming, so thank you for asking. So we're discussing tonight, not Monday? Yes, we're, we have time to do it. So let's, let's at least get some initial discussion going, and then we can make a, if we feel like we have a decision okay. tonight, or we want to do some kind of consensus, we can come back on Monday and reaffirm it, or, okay. um, and then vote. That makes we'll sense. vote that night. Okay. <coughs> All right, so anything that stood out, any? Well, I'll, I'll um, start out by saying that both of these people are, are great people that I could see either one in, in different ways. Um, so lovely people in general. <laughs> yeah, I, I would concur with that. I, I think my, I'm pleased to say that I, both candidates have the requisite experience and, and training and uh, understanding of the position to I think help us through this period. So, so this is a good place to be. Um, from that, I think, in in my opinion, nothing stood out. No, to answer okay. your question directly. I would well, agree. I think both of the candidates were really very good. It's going to be interesting, given the notes that I've written, to go back now and knowing them and their comments to relook at the information, including stuff that was handed out tonight. Um, and kind of get a different feel for what I read before might look different to me now, given what they've said. So I will be re-looking at it. So it's safe to assume that we will make a decision out of these two candidates? Yes, from yes. my perspective. Okay. It's everyone else? Yes. Yes, I think I mean, yes. That, a decision. You think I we have a candidate here? I believe so. I mean, how would we... What would be the other option? Right. We can extend the search, but I mean, I don't, I don't know if that would, yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know what that, that I needed to ask the question. Yeah, I think well, they're both very question. qualified, so okay. I think we have two good applicants. I don't know if you want to um, discuss any, any pros or any, you know, particularly important things on both candidates that you noticed that you, that you liked. I guess I could. I, I guess uh, there was one candidate that did provide more specifics on how they would manage, how they would approach things, uh, which stood out for me. Um, the one thing, the one thing that I was surprised about, in a sense, was that uh, I was really, I didn't, I didn't ask the question when when the mayor asked if, if there was a follow-up question. I just didn't think it was appropriate. But I was really hoping that that Wes, Mr. Levanchi, would talk a little bit more about his involvement with the floods that affected that area um, back in 2013. And just his response, you know, the intra-agencies that he worked with, that, that, that was one aspect that I was looking for. I was hoping that it would come out from him. I didn't want to lead him into that specific. So that was, that was one thing that stood out for me um, uh, over the two interviews. I would uh, echo that. Um, I think that there might have been an opportunity missed there as well. I thought uh, his emergency experience could have been one to hear more about. He also mentioned the oil and gas explosion they had, which is another one where, uh, needless to say, um, I think could have been very um, informative just on some of the experience he's had. My concern there was asking that question, though, and it being out of whack with the questions right. we asked uh, the prior candidate, too. So 
I, I wasn't sure if it was appropriate for us to do so, but um, I guess we know at least in passing he has some experience there, but getting the specifics of that would have been, I, again, I think informative on some of the things he's done. It's fine to ask follow-up questions as long as everyone get ask, gets asked the exact same questions. So, but we can explore um, because each candidate yeah, is and different. better if we didn't know that before. Than I, after. Sorry, I assumed that everyone knew that. That was probably right. in. I guess to that point is, you know, we've got more interviews to come with uh, permanent. So, um, he had gone second. We can't go back and ask the first woman. So you're saying that we could ask him a question that the first candidate did not? I think whenever you can, you don't understand something, you think they didn't quite cover a question as much as you would have liked, you can always go back and ask yeah, more. You're not, really not, not doing anything new. Um, I think what she's saying, too, is to make sure that all of our questions got asked, and if we mm -hmm. wanted other follow-up questions to supplement those, mm -hmm. you could add those. But we need to make sure all the ones that are on, uh, in our list were asked. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I asked her another question because I didn't think she, the planning one, she went in one direction, and I realized, oh, that, that makes sense because they're coming from planning backgrounds. They went right to comp plan or land planning, and I was thinking that question was about general planning, but maybe it was supposed to be that way. I don't know. So I think it's fine to do that. So when we get to the city manager one, we'll do a session on asking questions, and we'll spend a little bit more time than we did on this. I think we were rushed that night. We didn't really, you, um, if you haven't done a lot of interviewing, Legally, you want to try and stay asking the exact same question, but then go further if you need to, because every person's different. You've got different kinds of things you're pulling on, and but yeah, I think one candidate. I think um, from my perspective, uh, Ms. Egger. I think I don't know if it's Egger or Edger. 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 I think she says Egger, but Egger. don't but, tell um, me. I mean, just gave a lot more specifics. I, I didn't need to ask any further ones. I uh, was afraid we were going to yep. run out of time, but we were fine at the end. There were yep. just a lot of examples that were really specific and on target. So in that way, she, she sort of shone for me. And uh, to <clears throat> tag on to that comment, Mayor Olson, I think also with Mr. Sierra said it as well, and you're saying, speaking to the specifics we got from Ms. Egger, I, she also displayed a tremendous foundation in, of understanding about Englewood and its needs um, with, by curtailing her examples. Um, she gave examples of previous experiences, but curtailing realities here and challenges here and experiences here that we could, so that, so, you know, which you always, I, I love seeing when I'm interviewing and I thought, that that was something that pervaded all of the, the, the answers provided by her. I also appreciated the very thorough um, thoroughness of the responses of the examples. I thought that showed a really nice breadth of a understanding of our questions and what we were trying to get at and also just the variety of the experience, which I think um, she has. I did also like, um, she mentioned several times the importance of culture, and I think that's going to be really important for us, um, especially in this kind of time where we have a lot of change, the importance of keeping with our culture and um, helping to everyone to feel you know, good and heard and welcomed, I think is going to be really important. Uh, so I think, I think that uh, really impressed me with her a lot. But I wonder, too, if, if when we're, council's going to go through the exercise of deciding what specifically we want the interim position to do over the next that. time period, because I think that might also help um, with this discussion, because they each have different strengths. So I think that's really an important piece, and uh, both candidates brought that out to some extent, yep. obviously, mm -hmm. in, their, in their questions. So... How about if we do this, any, any more feedback on just some things that really stood out as positives for either candidate, and then, and then let's spend five or ten minutes just brainstorming what, what are the core things we want this person to do. And then we could, if we want a break tonight, we can come back on Monday and pick our candidate. If you think you want to do that tonight, we, I don't know if you're willing to stay till nine. Um, One thing I did also like about the candidate, Wesley, is he mentioned a couple times um, having specific action-oriented review meetings and together and coming back and I really I really liked that as well. I think that's gonna be important as particularly for this position. Like I said, I think both candidates were really good. I'd mm -hmm. really like to spend the time to go back through their resumes now having heard some of their feedback because I think I'm gonna see some of the things differently. And it would be 
we can't come to a decision tonight here in a study session. We, we can't, I mean, we have to make that decision there, so I do want to be cautious of that as well. But I think well, I don't think we're trying to make a decision tonight. No, I, I think was just it's referring to what the mayor had brought up. Excuse me. I was just referring to what the mayor had, had referenced. I thought you did just ask if yes, we could did. decide tonight. I, I said, yes, I said if you want, if you're wanting to stay until night, you think we can make a, uh, have some sort of a sense tonight of where we want to move, we can do that. If not, we have Monday, we've set aside um, an hour on Monday. But we will have to have a consensus during this study session on Monday. Uh, on some candidate to go in and make a decision on, and you can vote yes or no then, but um, we will have to come to that. Because we don't ever want to get caught in where we're just going into council and rubber stamping a decision that was of course. made. So. You can always vote no in there and can, you know, and say something it's that changed in your view. It's the discussion the format of how we're making the decision that's the important piece of that. I, I think it's very important if you all agree on what, I, what you're looking for, that will help you make your decision, as, as Council Martinez said. Um, if we have a clear view on what are we looking for, it's easier to go back and read the notes and read the, the, the resume. So, you know, I heard tonight that you want somebody that has a steady hand. Um, th that was one of the things. So why don't we brainstorm around what is it that we're looking for so you can go back to your notes and, and you know, look at, okay, this is the criteria we're applying, which one of the two candidates responded better to, to that criteria. I really like the financial background. I mean, the point that you made about being going through the budget. And both of them have that. I think he was a little stronger on the financial background. Um, and then the, um, not security, stability mm -hmm. a piece of it is, as well. I think those were the two important things that kind of right. got brought out. So. One of the things for me is um, <clears throat> not even so much the candidates, but where the candidates come from. Uh, Avon, Telluride, Sun Valley, those are all resort towns, ski towns. Avon, 15K population. Telluride and Sun Valley, 2,500 and 1,400 people apiece. Um, certainly more contingent on tourist uh, dollars, things of that nature. She mentioned Telluride is a festival town. We are not a festival town. She mentioned uh, pretty rapid development, which is, you know, certainly that's a contentious issue in this city, to be sure. Um, the gentleman, he's from Frederick and Firestone. Those would be more to me kind of booming communities as well, with Frederick being a little further down I-25. I think they've had a lot of expansion recently too, more for housing. Um, but that seems to me where they're pretty dependent on the oil and gas, he even mentioned it. And um, I think that neither one of, I don't think a single city we've got in front of us, I would say is very comparable to Inglewood, truth be told. And that's so sure. that's just something on my mind as well. Now, that doesn't mean that one of these can't adjust to what we've got here, but that is something that's on my mind also, is that um, none of these are just a, an apples to apples comparison, I think city-wise to where they come from to mm -hmm. what they're walking into here in Inglewood. Yeah, we don't I think have that, go ahead. I was gonna say, and I think that may be the difference between what we're looking at in terms of an interim versus a sure. uh, established city manager, because that did come, th that did cross my mind when I was going yeah. through the resumes yeah, of each I individual was how would they, mm -hmm. if, if they wanted to be the permanent city manager, what the, that looks like. So I guess in terms of what I'm looking for at, in an interim would be how well will they work with current staff? Mm -hmm. Because they will have to lean on, uh, on staff. And so that was something that both Cannon stated and that was one of the strong points that I heard from Mr. Levanchi was that he will work with others and he will um, uh, uh, solicit feedback from them in terms of what is working, what isn't working, um, and that type of thing. Because I do have a lot of trust in our active do you have your name tag up? Active deputy. <laughs> <laughs> active yeah. deputy. Active. I'm deputy sure she's acting. Yeah. Yeah. Acting, yeah, there we go. <laughs> right, right. Active acting. Yeah, yeah. Both start with they and they're six letters long. Um, <laughs> but um, but no, that that would be very important to me is how well would they be able to work with current staff in terms of um, what the next six, eight, nine months are going to look like. So. And, and us, too. Which ones we feel. Right. It's also it. It's hard. It's hard in an hour, right? It's hard in an hour. Um, and I think, um, as far as them coming from the same type of situation that we're in, is not really as important at this point because it is an interim position. And and I think there were things that were shared in the interviews from both of them that um, could translate into working well. Um, even because they've had experience 
they know how to think outside of the box or um, whatever, but I'm not as concerned. I mean, I, um, I think probably when we're looking at the city manager, the permanent city manager, um, if they came from the same type of city that we are, we would have to look at, is this the direction we want our city to go? Um, so that piece, you know, is not as important. Nobody's born me. knowing how to do it, and everybody eventually goes to a larger city in order to get the experience, but it's a well t point well taken that they're very similar sizes and kind of niche kind of situations that they were dealing with. So I've heard in the brainstorming, financial background, ability to stabilize or keep things in the, with an even hand, that staff relationships um, in developing those, and I added council. Um, is there anything else? I think, and it, I think it might be good to have a comp plan review or revisit at some point. I don't know if it's gonna be possible in the next six months to do that. We're but planning on it. We set a date yes. for it, so. Well, then I think that should, <laughs> just community. Well, then I think that should be part of, you know, our, our task of the, of the interim is to help us with that because we haven't visited it in a long time and we can't just let six or eight months go by without another check-in on that. I am only concerned about that in that we're getting the feedback of somebody that isn't going to be following through on that comp plan and the comp plan being um, intended uh, while maybe living and breathing, it's supposed to live and breathe for about tw at least 20 years. It's got to have a bigger lifespan than a few years to just be revisited in order to have that investment. And I really would like to leave that maybe a little bit for a, a discussion that we're going to have as we have a city manager come in because I think that'll meld into the ideas that we have moving to the future. I'm not sure we want to put that much pressure on that. Not that we can't visit it in that period of time, but I'm not sure that that's that that would be a good play for the interim necessarily. We, we do have it on our schedule, Mar partly because Member Cuesta asked for it and because mm -hmm. we haven't done any kind of review. So the meeting that we're going to have is going to be with community development coming to ask us how we would like to go about it. So that'd be the time for us to, because they're not, they're not going to come and start and say, okay, we're going to start here. They want to hear from us. Where do you want to start? Are there some hot spots you want to start with? Let's go with those first, or do you want to go through systematically? So that's in about... Getting feedback. Through three, yeah, that's the first meeting. It's not right. about... It's and that's such a long right. process, so I see yeah. what you're saying. I see, I see what you're saying. Do you know the date on that? <laughs> I yes. I have <laughs> Somewhere right here. At that point, I, I don't think anybody's expecting an overhaul of the... Um, October 22nd. But I think them having a consciousness of it is they're making decisions. They're still going to be here six nine months. So just as they go about daily operations, that they're within the boundaries right. of what we're expecting. Yeah. I think them having at least a passing knowledge of it would probably be. The best it surely thing. doesn't hurt to get a fresh set of eyes sure. on, mm -hmm. on, sure. on that plan. I think that's the exciting part of either one of them. It's just having someone that's you know, it's exciting for us maybe because we're not here every day, <laughs> but we have to find someone who's gonna, uh, who will help with the steadiness too. Well, the other thing I would like to add to that is that I think both of them um, demonstrated some examples and a willingness to deal with the citizens as well right. and to let them be heard and vet the issues that are going on so that they can get served. I mean, if we're here to serve, then you can't aggravate the people you're serving. So we want to make sure that those issues, sometimes hard to hear and sometimes hard to listen to, uh, I think both of them demonstrated examples where they've been able to accomplish that and respected that. So I'd like that in, in that piece too. We, um, we have the tape available. I mean, it was streaming live so we can go back and watch what each of them said and how they reacted to. So it's always go back and look again. So I have the steady hand, the stability, the financial piece, uh, the towns they have served, the thinking outside the box, as the Mayor Potom says, the staff council relations, the comp time experience, and the citizens relations communication. What, what is this list? This is the list of stuff that you came up with that was important, the criteria to, to take a look at the two candidates. I think what we started this I with was we the ready. idea that we wanted to have some uh, format of what we were expecting from the interim city manager, and that's kind of what we were writing down was these are the things that were we were just brainstorming, so yeah. those are not necessarily everybody's, but those are things people contributed. Yeah, I, I, 
think we need to probably whittle them down a bit to say, are there three or four things we really want this person to be and do, and, and do we fit? Does it fit? What are there, six? That was like Seven. Yeah. What about, yeah, I, don't um, think that's I don't know if this plays that's into nice. this exactly, but I know it's mentioned a couple of times recently with um, taking a, oh, what is it, like um, an overview of what we need to do in code enforcement over the 60, next 60 days. I don't know if we should include some that in our task of that, or if that's just going to be just the police department without support from? I would think the person has to be able to facilitate some of these things and pull the pieces together and pull the department heads together to make things happen. Well, because and no matter probably who, both no matter of them who can we do choose, it. we're going to have to give them very specific things of what we want them to do, right? Uh, around those issues, or? Yes. Yeah, or not. Or not. Right. Or just leave yeah. it open and then. No. Right, and I mean, those are issues that we're going to be addressing regardless of who mm -hmm. is right. in this position. If they attend the first meeting, they'll know it's an issue. <laughs> so I think we should make them aware of it, yeah, probably, which we did during the questioning as well. So, Mr. Member Wink, you, you looked like you were going to say something. I, when you look like that, sometimes I think you have a great idea. <laughs> do you have something more I to say? I tune into that. <laughs> uh, no, I... You're fine. Okay. Are you, do you think we should do a different, do it kind of differently on setting the priorities or how we're Thank brainstorming? You. Okay. Yeah, to me, what Mar Director Gonzalez just read doesn't sound like a list of final priorities that we would say, it doesn't look like, sound like a well thought through comprehensive, yeah, these things are absolutely what we want to pinpoint in our interim manager it sounded like, oh, I liked this, and oh, yeah, I noticed that, you know, these two are from cities of this size, and this kind of town, and the, 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 they didn't, didn't sound like a cohesive list of that to me. Would, would financial background, a strong financial background? I think we one? all agree that. that, that Being able to facilitate some stability. We but that, that doesn't sound like something we're looking for in them. That, to me, was a comment about what we expected them to do in their role. But, and we said, provide stability to the staff and to the citizenry and do, help us transition smoothly. It didn't sound like a thing we want them to be. What is the list of your crafting? I think, there's two, different so I think there's two different sets of things going on. I think we need to figure out what exactly we want them to achieve while they're here. But I think before that, or with that, we need to decide this criteria that we're going to select. Is it just these top four, you know, grading criteria, or are there other uh, kind of like attributes that we want them to possess? I'm thinking they're like two separate things. That's that that's why I wanted you to to do this exercise. Okay, we already have a criteria that we established on the job description. We all went through the job description, right. and the questions came out out of the job description. So I think if we concentrate on the four areas that we identify here and, and grade them on what we heard tonight on these criteria, we will have somebody that can do the things that you listed that you want them. I think, I think you're right. If you look at the, at the far right side of any of these grids, you'll get some ideas of what it is. Uh, the con customer focus really is a citizen focus, right? Mm -hmm. it's, who we are, it's who our citizens are. Our, Customers. And you are also their customers. And I mean, the, you yeah, will be their right. customers as well. So that's, that's what I wanted you to, to, to I mean, th I, I agree that both of them will have any of these seven in some degree. Okay? Right. Um, so we just need to concentrate on one week, what we came out of the, what came out of the job description that we built. And these four are from, exactly from the job description. So why are we coming up with a different list? No, that's, well, I, I, I think just wanted these I categories. Just want to agree are a little different than maybe what some of the things we were saying when we were asking, when they were asking us, how will I be successful, what can you do? It just so. kind of feels like we're drilling down a little bit more to say, take some of those and say, hey, we're seeing some demonstration of people that could create some stability here, and that is important right now, although I think both of them could do that, but kind of just saying, hey, that's kind of what it looks like to drill down a little bit more on some of the categories that I think that they already put in there. Okay. It might be the titles of the categories kind of fell flat for me, but when you look at the actual descriptions underneath it, they, they describe well what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, I agree with that. Um, well, it 
comes to life a lot more after the interviews because you're well, able to kind of put how they fit or right. don't fit. And well, actually, that kind of brings me to my next question was, what's the process from here moving forward? And I guess more importantly, are both still interested after tonight? So how do we know if they're still both interested going into Monday night? Yeah, when they pulls out already, tonight, they're already, down to one. Yeah, they already told me they're both interested. They're, okay. they're, they're waiting for to hear from us. <laughs> They, they, they already like said that. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just curious because, you know, no, well, no, no, because. We didn't any, scare them. Well, no, anytime <laughs> they you come into a job interview, you, maybe right. you came in with you a certain destroy. expectation. They're interviewing that's us just as much as Yeah, long. exactly. It's, yeah. it's two-sided. It's not just one way that but they're trying to get. But she answered that already. They're right. If apparently. someone pulls out tomorrow, then it'll do with that. Then we are, then our choices. Right. Good for them. So I would think, Maria, why don't you tell us what you think the process will be between now then. Again, we need to, we need to come up with a rating. Um, I think the best exercise that we can do is you come in ready, we can go through the four and decide what the rating will be on each one of the candidates and why. So we will say, okay, customer focus, you know, candidate one, candidate two, or Virginia and Wes. Virginia did, um, and I'm just making up numbers, it's a blank form in front of me. So Virginia has a four on customer focus, but he has a three on performance management, and we come up to a consensus. Um, that way it's easier to come up with what is the candidate that we want to hire. Um, things that we also have to consider is the communication style, um, if they can prepare or not, how prepared were they, were they. That's important because that will show you the level of interest and the level of attention to detail, which is very important on that job. Um, you know, the way somebody that gives a lot of examples is somebody that knows what they're talking about. That's what I told you when we talk about uh, doing behavioral interviewing. If they talk about things that they already done, they are going to repeat that behavior. So that's very valuable when somebody offers you a lot of relevant um, examples, meaning that they know what they're talking about. It's not just a general answer. It's an answer that it was drilled down, something that I already did. Um, so that's very important. So the process next week, we have the study session. We will you know, make a have a discussion about what do you think, you know, Virginia and Wes have better customer focus and performance management, and, and we go through the four, and we will have points. I mean, it's very easy. Once we have the points, we can add them up, and we say, yes, this is the person that we need to hire. And then we will go into the um, uh, regular session, and you will vote, and Alison and I will work on offering that candidate <coughs> a good job. So That's if I'm saying that correctly, we'll come in here Monday, um, you will say, I gave X amount of points to Virginia, X amount of points to Virginia, X amount of points to West, whoever has the highest score out of that, we just walk in there and vote. I think it's the easiest we'll way. Have unless, more discussion, I think. Yeah. Yeah. unless we have somebody that you gave it a one and, and, and Antonio oh. gave it a five, okay? Then we can discuss. But if we all agree on what the points should be, there is no need to take it longer. I mean, I think we are all. Well, there's seven of us, so. So I thought you were going to take the ratings tonight. But yes, I can give you an empty one, and I will keep the, the ratings if you don't mind. Okay, well, here, here, here's my deal. I wrote notes on here that would help me rethink what, I'm, what, okay. I, what I saw. So I would like to I take these with me, but I don't okay. mind giving you my numbers. No, no, no. I don't need to take the numbers. It, okay. I just need the, the forms not to get I They're, they're confidential, I so, not to so keep I them. Do the process that I said I wanted to do. Okay. Now, while I rated it right now, I'd like to go back, look at their resumes, given the answers that they give with my notes, and um, have the conversation. And the um, intent is to not just go ahead and come back with a number. My concern with that only providing a number, we go around and just do some kind of little round robin and hold up scorecards, is that then the citizens are not. You know, provided the information on why we're making the decision. So that's why it has to have the conversation. And most of that conversation, or at least some of it, needs to happen on the dais. Uh, I Can I, go ahead. Just a question. So just want to make sure that I had all the forms that were provided. So I received three different sheets for Mr. Levanchi and two mm -hmm. different ones for. Yeah, those are the documents that they provided. Perfect. Additional to what you already have. Okay, I just want to make two, sure I had everything. Wait a second, I only I got two for her tonight. Correct. And just one for him, I thought. 
That was a is handout. Three, is three, is three, three, three pages three. long. Yeah. The, the resume for him. Oh, yeah. And put in the resume. Oh, okay. Put in the but the only yeah. ones that were handed out tonight were two for her and one for him. No, yeah, you should have his resume, resume as well. Yeah, for him. Yeah. Like for Wes, we have a resume an email, and a press email. release. Yes. Okay, so there was a two for him and two for her that were handed out tonight. Yes. All right, thank you. No, no. I, I have them. There's three. Three, three there for him. Be three so for him. Three for him. Three for Wes. His resume, which is. Not his the resume is. No, you're, I'm only talking about what was handed out tonight. Correct. Yeah. Additional, then I don't have So there something. should be a second sheet to the resume. I don't have this. The I don't have a second sheet, sheet to that that was paper. handed out tonight, then. Yeah, but it's a complete oh, one. Oh, okay. okay. This one here. She has it. Double check. Because that's why we're always yep. concerned with things that are handed out at the thing. Okay, perfect. We're good. I have so, it off. I would expect that we could come back on Monday night at 6 and have a good conversation and then continue it in there, and it'll be under mayor's choice. So um, I don't mind rehashing things in there, and it's public both places, but um, no decision is made in here. We will vote in there, and we'll, we'll give further reasons. Um, but I think we need to have done some rethinking ourselves between now and yeah, then. And the, the blank interview guide is a public document, so the public has access to everything that is in here. Okay. They already know what the criteria that we're using, so they, they are informed of how we're making the decision already. Oh, good. Then in regards yeah. to that second piece where it was what, what are our expectations that are more specific for whoever it is, I think that that's something once we hire them to sit down and say, okay, here are some wish lists we have. We know we can probably can't get all this done in the four to six to eight months, you may, but what would be the prime things? And we can ask our directors particularly to help with that, to say, council, this is what we really need from you. And what's realistic. Yes. So I, I think that's where we'll just have to craft it together for more specifics. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Work with the directors to get the requirements and then work all together with the new person to yeah. hash out prioritization and feasibility. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone, for your time, and thank you, Director Gonzalez, for pulling us together. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Okay. <laughs> what time is it?